Welcome to TT Boy TV. Hey. Hey. How are you? Hey. Today we have a guest that's almost been around since the beginning of time as far as the adult industry, one way or another. And um, he's, he's a cameraman, a director, producer. Ralph Parfait is his name, or a.k.a. Jason Sullivan. And I've known him for quite a long time, 30 years. And his father was one of the most famous directors in the history of the adult business. So please welcome Jason Sullivan. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. I love being here. It's a treat. You, huh? It's a treat. Yeah? This is cool. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to hear. Yeah. Thanks. So how have you been? Pretty good. Can't complain. Yeah? Yeah. A little more free time than I'd like. But really? uh but that allows me to do some of the things I don't usually have time to do. But uh, yeah, you know, the business has changed a lot. Oh yeah, we're gonna go through that. That's a lot of change and you've seen it all. A lot. Almost. A you know lot. I mean? <laughs> so the last time we saw each other was at Jim's birthday party, about three or four months ago. Yes. Right? And then before that, the last time I saw you was at your father's memorial service, I'm pretty sure. That sounds about right. 2008. That's right. And then before that, yeah. I saw you probably in 1999, I'm guessing. I was probably working for a PT. Yes. Probably. Was that the last time you worked with PT? Yeah. Yeah? I'm pretty sure, yeah. And then you got busy with your own stuff. Yeah, I started doing my own stuff in 96, but I still would work, you know? Maybe right, by, right. By 2000, that was just the end. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right, man. 20 years ago, man. <laughs> Time flies, man. This is crazy. I want, I want everybody to understand that Jason's father's name was Henry or Henry Pichard. Henri Pichard. Henri Pichard, right? We just call him Hank Packard. <laughs> Hank Packard. <laughs> and I personally love the guy, right? He was a hell of a guy, a big, bright personality, highly intelligent. And, um, you know, and knew what the hell he was doing. And he started directing in the 60s, didn't he? I don't know if he was directing in the 60s. He worked on uh, black and white nudie cuties back then. They called them nudie cuties. They were uh, kind of like stag films, I guess. But more or less, he was, uh, he was just interested in theater back then. And he worked in some educational films. Oh, he worked? He was directing or he just worked in them? He worked as a technician or as a manager and stuff. He wasn't really directing so much uh, uh, in the film world as he was pursuing uh, theater directing gigs oh, really? in the mid-60s. Oh, shit. Yeah. A little later on, he cut his teeth in the directing. For, I think Hustler was the first, uh, I believe it was The Budding of Brie was his first <gasps> adult movie that hit the scene. It's a uh, big deal back. A Hustler movie? Or no? Well, it was it wasn't a Hustler movie. No, Hustler, I, I, I don't I don't know who uh right. who distributed it, but it was uh Hustler's highest rating, 100%, oh, okay. which put him on the map. But it was like his first film. Right. In an adult hardcore market. Right, I guess okay. we would call it I hardcore gotcha. back then. What, what year was that? I want to say it was about uh 1980, 81. Really? Yeah. Hmm. 79, 80, something like that. I wow. was just a wee thing back then, like a 12-year-old. So I didn't know much about that. So uh, <laughs> I found out you, about these things later. But you were uh, born in, what, 65? 64. 64. Yeah. Right, so, so that means, huh, so that means you're probably a little, a little older. But um, man, that's interesting. Uh, when did you first find out that he was in the business? I think I was about 11 or 12 because that's about the time when he actually got into the business too. You know, that, that, that's what he was doing. He was making like independent films with other companies and working as a, uh, like a production manager or production supervisor. And, uh, On porn sets, right? No, they were more like uh, independent Maybe R-rated films. Maybe. They might have had some nudity into them. Like I don't even know if you'd call them mainstream because I don't know if a lot of these things ever got distributed. Oh. 
But yeah. uh, so like a B movie, possibly. Kind of like that. I can tell you one black and white. Well, it's not all black and white. He he was the production supervisor for a movie in 1968, which is the first movie I was actually in as a like a three year old. No shit. Well, wow. it's a Putney Swope, directed by Robert Downey Sr. No shit, Robert Robert Downey Jr.'s father. Yes. Well, that's a trip. And they would come to the apartment. We lived, I believe it was Bleecker Street. Who would come to your apartment? The, the whole cast and, and really? crew. They'd come and watch dailies on 16 millimeter projected on the wall in our dining room. Wow. <laughs> so Robert Downey Jr.'s father yes. came to your house. I don't remember him. I'm not sure if he came. Oh, okay. But everyone else did. Uh, okay. I mean, I sat on, I could uh, starve to get her name straight. Uh, one of the leading gals, the one who took the pie in the face with the Miss America pageant. Uh, her name escapes me. Uh, I used to sit on her lap, and at the end of the night, I'd smell like her perfume and all this. And mom, yeah. mom would put me to bed. It's like, what it smells just like. <laughs> Miss America, you said? She was playing a part oh, okay. of the beauty pageant and, you know, trying yeah. to get the uh, running gag in the show and all this kind of thing. It was a black and white movie about an advertisement agency. Uh -huh. And all the ads were done in color. It's the only uh -huh. part of the picture that was color. Huh. So it was a farce of black exploitation movies in the 60s that were uh -huh. happening. Like that. My father was actually very big in the uh, 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 um, equal rights movement. Oh, really? I used to go on a lot of marches and stuff with him. And uh, really? do uh, block parties and raise awareness and do big murals and stuff in New York. He went down to Atlanta and uh, was setting up stage lights for when the parade uh, uh, came from uh, Montgomery and uh, was involved with some of that stuff. Wow, that's, a, that's interesting. He's got a pretty big history of that. Yeah, so his name was out there on the papers or something, you know, being part of the march? No, nobody knew who he was. Okay. No, he was just part of the movement. Wow, you know. that's cool. Yeah, we, you know. It's a trip. I mean, he's, you know, an open minded, intelligent person, right? So. Very, very. Uh, uh, very open-minded, extremely open-minded. He was, he was uh, I'll give you an example. He grew up in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. It was a very conservative time in the 50s and a very conservative part of the world. And that's not far from Jesse James' old uh, stomping right. grounds. That's right. I know <laughs> you admire those guys. Uh, there was a black gal in the uh, graduating class and during the history, or during the uh, rehearsals for the graduation ceremony uh all the you know, it was one guy one girl they'd hold hands walk down the aisle together and go up and get their diplomas right mm -hmm. well during the rehearsal all these guys would step out of line when the only black girl who was in there was their turn and my dad saw this and he was like come here never mind these guys i'll take your hand and escorted her from the way because everybody else would dip out that come down the line and pair out because they didn't want to be seen holding a black woman's hand. Wow. Right? So my dad saw this and I said, this is fucked up. And I said, come here, you pair up with me and we'll go. Oh, yeah. he, had a, he had a spirit, huh? Yeah. 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 He's always been a very multicultural guy and has a lot of respect for you know, people's dignity. Yeah. Now, like I said, I probably mentioned this at his funeral that he knew more about you than you did before you walked in the door. <laughs> oh. He just gets people. He was always good with people like this. He used to, you know, which was great, you know, for me, make your head blow up, you know. But he used to call me the Michael Jordan of porn. Uh, that's fitting. All the time. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. When you showed up, we knew we were going to the championships, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, PTT, Sheriff. Yeah, we're getting the day done. We're going to finish this day. No problem. <laughs> Another cameraman, John, JD, right? Yeah. John Dern. What, what is it? His, his Jack Ramey. Jack Ramey. Okay. Jack Ramey. Well, the state team. So, but anyway, he used to say, oh, yeah, that he thought that was the best performer that he had seen. And he shot Rocco all the time. I thought Rocco was unbelievable. Rocco right? was good. He was different, though. Mm -hmm. Different guy. You, different demeanor. And Rocco played a different role than you did kind of thing. But, yeah. you know, well, how did you, different stuff. Did you see me as a super performer? Or how did you see Every, me? I think everybody did. Yeah. yeah. So maybe the best? Or would you? Would you were you, money in the bank. Yeah. Baby, every time you showed up, we said, "Okay, fellas, here we're in good hands." Yeah, <laughs> it was that was that. Everyone in the crew knew that. Yeah, it was like, "Oh God." But well, who was the best? 
I think it was you. Yeah? yeah. I've only worked with Rocco a couple times, and he was great. Great, yeah. But I worked with you a hundred times, mm -hmm. a thousand times. I don't know. Well, a lot of times we worked together. Yeah. And you were like the most solid guy in the business, hands down. Yeah? Yeah, no for matter sure. What. Yeah. 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 I never saw Rocco fail either, but I only worked with him five or six times. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Right. He was in Europe and would come occasionally and whatever. And he was great. I like Rocco. Rocco's a great dude. You right. know, I like right. Rocco a lot. And you were a freaking great dude too. But you were awfully quiet when you first came. You were hard to get to know. Oh yeah. You know, so what's who's what's up his sleeve? But don't worry about it. He's good. Don't you know? <laughs> put I was very quiet. Yeah? Put on a show. <laughs> you were zoned in, man. You knew what you were doing. <laughs> well, I wanted to make sure I did the perfect job for everybody. I didn't want to make a mistake. You, you know. You were extremely reliable. So you showed good. up on time every right. time. Two, two scenes in a day. I can do and, four scenes in a day, but well, only two scenes for you guys. Yeah. Who knows how many you did before you got there, yeah. you know, <laughs> where you were going. But it was like, yeah, well, don't worry. But you worked with pretty much every actor. I worked with a lot of them. Right? Pretty much yeah. every one that ever came around. Almost, right? Some were, you know, gone before my time, of course. But uh -huh, yeah. uh, I sure work with a lot of them. I don't know who's working today. I, you uh -huh. know, I meet a lot of new guys now. You know. We know there's a lot of different techniques today, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like shooting their dicks up and Viagra and all, so it doesn't really count. My friend, my friend, Point taken. Franco Roccaforte, who's a wonderful actor and a, a, um, a friend of mine from Germany, but he's from Venezuela, but he's in a European. He's with Rocco's movies. He's great, right? Okay. He did an interview the other day for a magazine, and he said, Cut the bullshit. He goes, an actor that is connected to the pharmacy, this is his words verbatim, is only half an actor. Right? Uh, okay, yeah, I get it. That's what he said. You know I, get I, mean? it, I get it, I get it. He's been around 30 years in, you know, in Europe working as an actor. So you say, while the actors are good people, nice, they're not a full actor. They're only half an actor because they're taking Viagra and the... And the Fake stuff. Anyways, so hey, you worked with all the actors, and so you think that out of all those people, I was the best? I think certainly for sexual performance, you were the best. Yeah, I'm not the best actor as dialogue. You didn't sign up for those roles. <laughs> but I liked them, you know what I mean? But nobody yeah. trusts me. You know, I think that they... You got, I'm getting better and better, but you were not aiming for that. No. I, well, I never I, felt, I, yeah. some guys don't, they just, right, right, I'm, right. I'm, I'm here to, you know, fuck these girls and properly, you know. Exactly. I was there to just get some, yeah. well, I was not really, because I liked everything, so I really <laughs> wanted to act too, but, you know, I didn't really aim for, like you're saying, like a big role. Right, but yeah. right. Anyway, so that's great. Thank you for the compliment. You're welcome. Anyway, back to you. So how was it growing up with your father in New York, right? Well, interesting enough, I didn't actually grow up with my dad. I grew up with oh. my mom up in Woodstock. They bought a summer house there in 68. But wow. they were getting divorced when I was about three and a half years old. Oh. So I saw my dad on weekends or, you know, every other weekend or every other month, depending on what was going on. Oh, really? Yeah, you know, uh, how, sometimes he'd be off in uh, Connecticut or New Haven working on one of these little independent movies. I actually played a part in one of these so my brother and I both did. But so it was not on a daily. I saw my dad once at all. You know, it was uh, several times a year, perhaps, or maybe only a few times a year. On, uh, you know, maybe it's Thanksgiving we go down there or, uh, you know, spend a, a weekend with him. And we'd take the bus from Woodstock down to Port Authority in New York. He'd meet us there. We'd go watch a bunch of kung fu movies on 42nd oh, yeah? Street. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like worth it. I love those movies. I'm sure I sat in there. With, ah, no, no, I'm sure these guys, I like the Wu Tang Clan. Right, yeah. I sat with those guys when they were eight years old. You know really? What I mean? Oh, yeah. probably. You think? I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. throwing milk toads at each other. I mean, it was three features we'd watch. Wow. You know. An hour and a half each or an hour each, something like that? Yeah. Well, oh, that's great, though, because cinema, let's, people don't know because it's a whole different world today. Yeah. But there wasn't that many movies out. I know. Right in those days, yeah. in the 68, yeah. how many movies were filmed, you know, um, in America, at least, but those are international movies, but right. how many movies were really out there to be shown and who had the capability to show them right. not that many not that much right. compared to today and, Netflix you know what I mean and these are great for kids 
I mean, they're action-packed. You know, it's English dubbing. It's all, yeah, (laughs) it's out of sight stuff. It's over the top. It's fantastic. Fun, man. Audience participation. It was great. (laughs) Everybody's screaming and yelling at the screen. (laughs) Uh, And they're flying through the air. It was great. Backwards and stuff. Yeah, it's great. (laughs) Because I always dreamed of being like a kung fu guy. Wow, and I took kung fu too, right? (laughs) But it's great. It's, it's great. You know, it's just beautiful. But at the end of the day, you really want to be able to kick and punch as hard as you can, as fast as you can at the right spot. That's really what works. <laughs> with, with an idea, too, you know, behind it. Set somebody up. But anyways, yeah, those are great. So tell me more. Well, let's see. Uh, of course, my dad was also, uh, uh, he liked football as a sport. Uh, that's probably where I get my, you know, that's the only sport I really watch today. Is football, uh, right. uh, NFL football. The Jets? You like the Jets? I like the Jets. I'm Represent all, New York? I've yeah, got the hat. I can't show it to you, but it's here. The uh, Broadway Joe, baby. I grew up on Joe Namath. He was my hero when right. I was four right. years old, you know. Is he from New York? I don't well, know. Originally from Alabama. Okay. He went to the Crimson Tide. Okay. You know, that's where he comes from. But he, he made the, uh, the guarantee that he'd beat the Colts in the Super Bowl, and by God, he did it. Right. Super Bowl three. Well, you're, well, you're saying way back? Season was 68. I guess this bowl was 69. Oh, all right. Sounds like four or five, you know, making guarantees and men coats. Well, that's great. If you, if you can back <laughs> up with the shit you talk, you're a bad MFO motherfucker. You know what I mean? I didn't have people like this back then. You no, know. But Ali. Ali is one of the guys. That's it, right? That's yeah. it. It was about the same time. Right. But NFL didn't have this. You right. know, This was, you know. That's cool. So Joe Namath. Joe What's Namath. up? Shout out to Joe Namath. He's selling insurance today. Yeah. He's, he's still, not stopping, yeah. He's still out there. He's uh, recovery and all this kind of thing. Uh, he's yeah, coming. Yeah. He had a rough, rough off season. Yeah, to, I heard. You know, after football is tough for him, man. Yeah. You know, the, the alcohol and stuff. But hey, he's still standing. More power to him. Ah, yeah. Well, he's a serious dude. A- anybody to hit the high level, yeah. you know what I mean? At the top of the top of the top, yeah. whatever field you're in, it takes a lot of endurance, a lot of mental strength, and a lot of luck. Mm. Yeah, I think it takes luck too, the right place, the right time. True that. You know what I mean? Everything comes together like, like a piece of art or something, and it all works. But you know, regardless of the timing, is that there's no way you get there if you're not fucking great, right. and you're not gonna make it. Right. You're not gonna be great. And Joe Namath is for sure one of the greatest uh, quarterbacks, right? Yeah. Well, and you know that was early in the NFL's history, so it kind of proved that the AFC could measure up to the NFC. Okay. You know. Sure. The Super Bowl era. But anyway, we talk about my dad <laughs> growing yeah. up with him. And he had a passion for football, too. Okay. And so we'd try to catch, all, you know, the Jets games and stuff and watch them on TV. And uh, we'd go off to the park and throw the ball around and all that. And both my brother and I and him, you know, we were kind of nuts for football. Let's, I want to introduce your brother in here real quick. Sure. Your brother is Nathan Sullivan, and he went by, what? Well, Nate Woodburn. Nate Woodburn, right? Nate Woodburn, he had the beautiful series yes. called Inner City Black Cheerleader Search, I think. Nate Woodburn's Inner City Black Cheerleader Search. Black Cheerleader Search. Yes. And it was wonderful. I was in a few episodes. Yeah. And, um, you know, we became competitors with at Devil's Films. He started six months before me. And then he had, you know, then I came up with Black Street Hookers. This yep. was 1996. Yeah. Right, same. We both started the same year, nineteen ninety six. Yes, and I loved his uh, the way he shot it and the way it was and the girls he got. I, I was jacking off to him. They were beautiful. <laughs> it was some hot stuff. Yeah, it was great. He had great vision, and uh, you know, and we had a little spout over a girl named Mika, Mika Johnson. I think I know a little something about that. Yeah. Right, <laughs> and since your father, since I respected your father so much, and I liked you a lot too. I didn't say too much when normally <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't talk to anybody. It would be fist first, you know what I mean? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. But of uh-huh. course, I respect you, your father greatly, you know what I mean? Yeah. Respect, he's gone, but, and your brother is cool too. Yeah. You know, he's a nice guy. Uh, and he respects you as well. Yeah. And I know you guys were kind of rivals at one point. Yeah, it was fun, you know, you know what I mean? But you guys came together, had some, did some legal work together, you know, look, yeah. going after the counterfeiters and pirates. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you both had some issues with that. Oh, yeah, we kept getting counterfeited, but yeah. yeah. All over New York, right, yeah. Yes, yeah, big city stuff. 
which was, was the big oh, market for that huge stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, it was a great time. But yeah, anyway, that's your brother. Yeah, he's a good guy, and the movies he made, I thought were beautiful. Oh, good, I'll pass it on. Yeah, I love. I mean, I, there's a few girls that I really. I mean, yeah. You, you know. guys have a lot in common in that department. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love them. You know, that's the only. That's the reason I started working for Devil's Film. Okay. Because Mike Rubenstein told me Devil's Film. He said, "I want you to make movies for me." I said, "Well." I mean, I'm TT Boy right now. I have, I'm performer of the year. I have a lot of work. It's so easy for me to work mm -hmm. and get scenes done. It's like I'm on a holiday every day. Right. Three or four scenes a day, you know, four, five, six hundred dollars a scene. I'm just having a good old time, right? It's just like, why do I want to do that, right? But he says, well, you could do it with black girls. Yeah, pick your own. Right? And there was no <laughs> black girls, hardly only like you know, a handful for the last five years. It was you, Nate Woodburn, and Sugar Walls. Right, right. No, but the black girls. There was no black girls. But those was the only companies doing black girls. Right, right. But there's no black girls. Right. So, they, right. Where so do you find you, them? So, you know, you're just, I'm thirsty for beautiful black girls. And so I said, fuck it. I'll do it. Right and on. thank God he, he told me that. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> anyway, because the base of Angle was sprung from that and T.T. Boy Productions. and Mike was quite, you know, quite a good dude, too. Well, Mike's wonderful. Yeah. You know, and I, I have a 1,600 movie catalog, thanks to Mike. 1,600? You know, getting me started. Yeah, I own 1,600 movies of my own. I directed or produced. Really? And distributed, yeah. Wow, no shit. That's a good catalog. That sure is. And a lot of but movies. But you did yourself. Right. Most people have other people doing their movies for them. Right, right. You know what I mean? Well, they well, own them, but somebody else made well, them. Well, I didn't direct every single one, but I fairly... Very closely produced every single one. Okay, you right? produced them. Yeah. But I directed maybe three or 400 of them, right? And went around the world. But the thing is that a lot of my movies are irreplaceable because I have talent that will never be seen again. The orgies that are hard to do from Brazil to South Central to Europe to Asia, you know what I mean? And, and all kinds of um, beautiful music and hip hop and all kinds of stuff that's really takes a little fine detail to mm -hmm. get finished, which I don't think most people today want to put that much love into a black product. That's my opinion. And I put a lot of love, because I loved, you know, I loved it. Anyways, so yeah, your brother had, was, had wonderful movies, and they were very, they were the movies that you would watch, inner city cheerleaders, you know, buy some. I mean, I'm not going to hate on them. Buy, you know, yeah. but I, I know he probably doesn't own them anymore, but... Um, well, they're, you know, somebody else owns them now. Right. Dev and the, um, Devil's, I think. Devil's owns them, yeah. Yes, yes. Devil's still owns them, yeah. So yeah. Keith, but then he sold it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The company's been sold three times. I believe it. Devil sold it to Keith, and then Keith sold it to, to the uh, toy company. Any case, that's some um, secret information for the viewers. Okay. Right? Did you know that? Like the, the, um, the one novelty toy company... I, the one, you know, there was Doc Johnson, there was... New Beginnings? New, no, no, no. No, it was a. Um, I'm not gonna guess. It was not that old of a company, but now it's 20 years old. The company, but anyways, they bought it. Okay. It was a company that was over there on Lassen and uh, Desoto, but they had a, a, a different name to it. And then Belladonna's sister used to work there. Pure? No. No, I don't. Not Doc Johnson. No, not Doc, and not um, the guys that went out of business on um, Desoto, but I was on Lassen. Anyways. Oh. Yeah, I'm not up. But on yeah, it. you know. Yeah. They had, I guess they came up with a great company. They're still kicking ass. Any case. So, it was good movies of Jack Off, too. I loved them. So, back to, back to your father. Your father was a hell of a guy. So, he's taking you to football games, kung fu movies. And is he introducing you to the porn stars? Or when did he start? You're saying he started to, when did he start working on the sets? I started working on the sets in 1982. He came up for my graduation at high school. You know what, the graduation ceremony, right? I went back to the city with him that night, stayed at his apartment with his third wife. He was married to a yeah, third wife, I believe so. Uh, the 65th and 1st Avenue. I mean, look, hold on. Your father had a lot of energy, right? Yeah. I mean, he was strong. Yeah. So I'm, and he was charming. He so was I busy. believe. He what? <laughs> he was busy. He was busy. <laughs> All over the oh, place. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm guessing because he had, he had strength. Yes. He may have been married three times, but there was a lot more going on. Yeah, God bless him. <laughs> At that time. I mean, 
guy, hey. guy was all over this map. <laughs> you're either that man or you're not that man. Or you're not that man. Yeah. Right. Uh, my dad and I have very dis- different personalities. Yeah. You know, we just see the world through different eyes. So basically you're saying that he was all over the place having sex with all kinds of girls. All kinds of girls. And he kind of let me in on some of this stuff. We uh, did a lot of partying together. Like I really? said, we didn't grow up together. I didn't okay. grow up with him other than, you know, the visits on weekends and watching football and kung fu movies and stuff. But uh, when I moved in with him after high school and I started working on The Devil and Miss Jones Part 2, that was my first gig as a PA. You got me on board with that. So you made a deal with me. Devil and Miss Jones number two, okay? Yeah. Because Gerard Gerard Domino did number one, right? Correct. Right, directed and whatever. This was a Nebo film. Nitkis and Bogus. Nitki and Bogus. Nebo. They produced the second uh, one. Uh, Nebo films. Uh, anyway, uh, so that was, I was working as a PA, taking out the trash and making coffee. And 1982. 1982. So that's the first set you're on? Summer of 82, July. It was a heat wave in New York. And oh, man, it gets humid in New York. We, we were going into, uh, I had to go out to Queens, from Manhattan to out to Queens in, uh, on the number seven train, third stop from the end. Um, Corona Queens, where Vince Benedetti's studio was. At the time, it was called Adventure Studios. I think now it's called Gotham, or oh, had yeah. been called Gotham. Sounds like a mob guy, Benedetti. He was very close to Damiano. Really? They shared a lot. Of, I think they owned a uh, a beauty salon together, okay. and some other things like that, you know, and uh, a tenant a tenement building too. I think oh, it was really? was above the studio actually. Oh, they, but they, they did they, they own that? I believe so. Oh, that's cool. I think they were renting to folks above the studio. That's beautiful. Out there in Corona, and I spent a couple of weeks out there prepping the set, building hell, painting the entire studio black. Oh yeah, that was the Miss Jones. And working yeah. with an all male. Homosexual art crew, <laughs> which kind of blew my mind as an 18 year old out of oh, Woodstock yeah. who had been out of the sticks were, all his life, you know, or most of his oh, time. Oh, yeah, were they trying to pick up on you? They teased me a little bit. But they, they, but they you know, it was kind of the director's son, and it was, you know, oh, they yeah. knew to behave a little bit, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so cool. it was careful but, with that. You know, I, I found. But what an at, eye opening experience, you know what I mean? It's, we'll talk about multicultural, multi human, yeah. you know. Get, get exposed, kid. <laughs> get ready for yeah. this is the big time. Welcome to New York. But I always found <laughs> the the gay people always so friendly and nice. They were very friendly, the very nice. No, I mean, you know, n- not disrespectful. I never saw that. Did you see it? No, never. No. Oh, they were always respectful. They kid around and joke a lot. You know, they tease you a little bit. But that was okay. You know what I mean? That wasn't intimidating yeah. by any means. Yeah. And they had a great time. They were in each other's laps, in each other's arms. <laughs> You know, cackling and carrying on, you know how they get. <laughs> Having a great old time. Whenever you get a whole flock of gay men together, they just cut loose, you know. Yeah. Just, you know, <laughs> the hair is down and they're, you know, they're there oh, themselves. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's way back. Yeah, that, that's not that far back, right? 82, no, yeah. 82, but, you yeah. know, I don't think, I'm not even sure we had gay pride uh, parades back then, you yeah. know. Pro- no, probably not, yeah. It was, was a different soon, world. Soon to come, you know what yeah. I mean? But the HIV thing hadn't really come into the mm-hmm. play yet. That was just around the corner from that, you know. And, uh, right, now, people were more concerned about crack back then, mm-hmm. not not HIV. The crack epidemic in the East Coast was kind of a big deal back then. Rock yeah. cocaine. Yeah, that, in LA that, too, that, it was serious. Yeah. yeah, a lot of bloodshed and a lot of yeah, you know, uh, hurt, you know, hurt people. People got you know damaged. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, New York is a tough town, man. So you Devil Miss Jones. See everything in New York. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what was going on? How was it? I De- mean, who was there? Who was? What stars were on the oh, set? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, that's where I first met, like Sharon Mitchell. Sharon Mitchell. Sharon Kane. Sharon Kane. Richard Bola. I fucked it too. I didn't fuck. You didn't Bola. fuck Richard Bola. <laughs> Oh, okay. Arbola, right? Yes. Arbola. It went by Arbola. Very oh, is it good. Richard Bola or is that's, that? This is okay. the full name. It went by Arbola. Okay. Usually. Uh, uh, Ron just, Jeremy. Ron Jeremy. Isn't that one? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, Jack Wrangler, who played Lucifer, also known as Lucy. I heard that name. He did. Did he do a lot of work back then? Uh, he did a, a little bit of both. Oh. Gay really? and straight Whoa. stuff. Yeah, okay. bisexual stuff. Yeah, he's played played both sides. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's a 
offense and defense. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want. I don't think a lot of people knew that back then, but uh, unless you were in the know, you know, but that was kind of the deal. You know. And a lot of these guys are gone now. HIV, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, I met guys like George Payne. I don't know if you're familiar with that name. Uh-uh. Uh, well, he was prolific. He did a lot of work in New York. Uh, actor? Yeah. Oh, really? Cool. He, yeah. Porn star. He was good? You recognize him with a rubber band around his wrist. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, what does that mean? He was stroking? George Payne would also stunt a lot. Oh, really? Oh, but okay. He brought his credits with him. Oh, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> so he was strong. Band. He was strong. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Cool. Oh, conquered everything. No yeah. problem. Oh, like cool. you, but oh, yeah. not a, maybe not as prolific. Oh, well, yeah. A little older, too. Yeah. You know? He was a cool cat. A little crazy, but a cool cat. Uh, Jerry Butler I met. He wasn't in The Devil and Miss Jones, but he was in the, in the next How one. was Jerry Butler? He's crazy. A genius. It's crazy. Good actor, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah? Fantastic. I mean, I saw him. He's a guy that you He's saw in the set. guy. You like him, right? You just... And you always have fun with him, man. Yeah. He just made you smile. You yeah. can't help but like crack up when you know he'd get into a performance on the screen and he'd you know he'd turn away from the camera and like give you some looks and stuff. Like, you try to you know not blow the take and laugh and stuff, but he'd cut you up, man. <laughs> he could improvise. He knew your lines better than you knew your line, you know, because that's how. Really? That, yeah, he was he was sharp. He was very good at what he did. He did a lot of good work. He was New York, so he's a New York guy. He's from New York. He came out here a little bit too, but yeah, yeah, but yeah. he's from New York. He's a New York guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's yeah. from New York, so you're in New York. That was Miss Jones, New York, right? That was all done in New York. We flew in some talent from the West Coast. Oh, who? back then we used to do that. Um, I want to say Anna Ventura, oh. maybe. Oh, you know, yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember some of the Jacqueline Lorians. Oh, really? She just looked like she was sexy. Yeah, red hair, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure she was from the East Coast or not, or, okay. or West Coast. I wasn't so f- sure about that. We use a lot of New York talent. Alan Adrian played Cyrano de Vergiac with a prosthetic oh, penis that. nose oh. that that Georgina Spelvin sat on. She was oh, it's Georgina Spelvin. First, Who? first scene that we shot was her what? sitting on his nose. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's great. So that's a great idea. Steadicam in 1982. Who did Steadicam in 82? In, I mean, a, mainstream. in a dull movie, right? It's new to mainstream. Well, explain to people what a Steadicam is. Steadicam is on a on a weighted gimbal with a spring tension leveling device to keep the camera level so you can make these really smooth moves through doorways and upstairs and around corners and and it's floating. It's like a floating camera. It doesn't bobble, doesn't move. And uh, it takes a trained person to operate that's not easy. It's a lot of weights, a lot of uh, you have a harness on your shoulder and a we're shooting 35 millimeter back then, so oh, the cameras are really heavy, yeah, and the counterweights that. are really heavy. Oh yeah, how big? Is, are they about that big, right? 35 millimeter. Yeah, cameras? and uh, it depends if you're using a blimped housing and all this kind of. I'm not sure that we had. It was. A, I'm not sure it was a sound friendly rig either. I don't really remember. Uh, Larry Ravine was the DP on that. Uh, okay. He was not the Steadicam operator, but we only you really used that for one shot. It was the opening shot of uh-huh. the show. So, so who? Because I'm into the girls. A lot of people out there want to know about girls, right? That's what, how I feel. But you know, everything's interesting when you don't know about it if you're interested in film and porno. But right. what girls? You have Georgina Spelvin. You have Sharon Mitchell, Sharon Kane, Jacqueline, Jacqueline Lorenz, Lorraine, or whatever she, her name is. Lorenz, I believe. Lorenz. Yeah. What girl was the hottest? What girl you looked at and said, fuck? This girl's fine, hot. Well, I always like Sharon Mitchell. Sharon Mitchell. She had a body, right? She had a serious body. She's a personality, too. A personality? Yeah. She's still around, you know. She's yeah. not like she was. She is. No, but <laughs> She's on else. Her body is very durable. She, I saw her, I don't know, it's been a little while since I've seen her, but her body always looked yeah. hard and oh, strong yeah. and in great shape. Oh, yeah. Right? Phenomenal. But, yeah, like I'm gonna athletic. Tell, yeah, yeah. I'm going to uh-huh. tell you. When I used to watch the movies, I totally saw Sharon Mitchell stood out. She does. Right? And I would say, damn. Yeah. That she stands out and that she's got something so sexy and hot about yeah. her. Sharon Kane is awfully cute. Annette Hines. I'm not sure she was in that film. Oh. I'm trying to remember where she was. Yes, she was. Uh, Joanna Storm. She came from the West Coast. She I was heard, of, I heard of her too. name before. She was in, uh, oh, I'm trying to remember everybody here. 
I met Kelly Nichols around that time. I don't think she was in the film, though. She, she have, must have been really pretty in those days. She's awfully cute, too, yeah. She Who still is really cute. Who was the prettiest, you think? Not, not, I know Sharon Mitchell wasn't the prettiest. She's the hottest, right? Oh, I thought she was the hottest. Uh, uh, I found Jacqueline Lawrence to be interestingly pretty. Yeah. Not, I, mm-hmm. you know, I can't say I really have a type. Uh, and she was not my type, but I found her infatuatingly pretty. Uh, another gal was... Uh, Um, Anna Ventura was also very I I found her to be quite beautiful too and I don't know where she came from either probably Ventura (laughs) Ventura County (laughs) yeah Uh, Samantha Fox oh yeah she looked hot brown haired girl yeah yeah she was on the set I kind of like brunettes you know was that the girl on the set you're saying that was Miss she was on there too she was uh, she played the nun (laughs) Oh yeah! Wow. Yes, that's uh, kinky. Well, that kept putting you know George, uh, Miss Jones in another body, right? Oh, okay. So there was Miss Jones was played by all these different women, depending uh-huh. on what you know what I mean. Right, uh, right. Hooker here, a lady von salesman turned pros- uh, turned dildo saleswoman, uh, turned nun, you know, because uh, Lucy Lucifer would get jealous and just no oh, no no take her out of that body and put her somewhere else, but. But she made a deal with him. He made a deal with her. Oh, you know, it's like, you, like he'll return you to the. It's not like a good movie. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, man. It's a complete farce. It's all comedy. It's not down and grim uh-huh. and dark. It's funny. Fred Lincoln. Fred Lincoln played the chef in Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> really? Yes. That's a very funny part. That's when I first met Fred Lankin. He's a cool guy. Very cool guy. Yeah. He, uh, he was one of my mentors also. Really? Yeah. He, he hired me in the second movie that I ever worked on, Man Eaters, where I met Tiffany Clark. So the first movie, and Tell Miss Jones, and the second one is, so he hired you right away, you say? It was a few months after, several months after. As a PA? Uh, yes. Producer's yeah. assistant? Production assistant, yes. Production assistant. Yes. I was still getting my feet wet. Did you get any action, any luck, any girls grab your ass or grab your nuts? I believe it was that that thing. That's when Sharon Mitchell sat on my head. <laughs> but <laughs> really? when I was picking up an apple box in the hallway and she came up and just, <laughs> just jumped on the top of my head when I was coming up. That was kind of fun. Naked? Yeah. All right, that's great. That's about as close as I got to anything. <laughs> well, how'd you feel? You're 18. I was still a virgin. Back then. Still a virgin. I didn't lose my virginity for like another year with another civilian. But <laughs> oh, really? Yes. So that was you must have been like yeah excited. It was exciting. She's, she's sexy. Fuck. Fuck yeah. Sexy as hell. I mean, they were all. Sexy. I was a fan of Sharon. I work with her, but I was a fan of Sharon Mitchell. She's and I worked with her, and she was hot. I worked with her twice. Yeah. 89 and 90, yeah. She was hot. Yeah, this was back in 82, 83. She was really hot, huh? I mean, young and sexy and yeah. Busy. hot. <laughs> it's yeah. Active. Yeah, she had a lot of energy back then. But yeah. She was really entertaining. Very I mean, strong. Even off the set, you know. She yeah. was a conversationalist. She was a lot of fun. Right, she always... I always Partier, loved... she liked going out. She liked talking it up. She was, really? She was always having fun. <laughs> She liked to party, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Did you see anything on the set? Any drugs on that set? Not on those sets particularly. Maybe off the set a lot. A lot? <laughs> what drug was the drug of choice? This cocaine was everywhere back then. Cocaine, yeah? Everyone was doing cocaine. Really? I, I mean, Did you I do? A little bit, <laughs> but not a lot. Yeah, you know, I was not really into that too much. Probably did more out in California, actually, than I did in New York. Back really? Then. It was actually even more in California. On the sets? <laughs> Not on the sets. Yeah. Just around. In the business. I mean, in the office. I mean, he was fucking everywhere. Really? Yeah. And then the 90s showed up, which was like the decade of recovery. Everyone uh-huh. was like an AA and stuff like that. We were having 12-step meetings on the set. I had a girlfriend that would lead these meetings. She was really? six years sober when I met her. Yeah. I, I, Guys would I, I, break out the set? blue book. Porno sets. A Ron Vogel studio. Wow. Yeah, yeah. lunchtime. Okay, everybody eat. Yeah, and we're going to have a little meeting after, you know, and the, before we go back to work. Oh, I never saw that. Well, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, they talk about, you know, 
brother, their friend Bill with higher powers and 12 step and huh. all things. You know, it was so, all another education for me. I lived with a gal that was a 12 step. So, so you didn't see any drugs on the set, per se? Not when I was that young, that age. I was still, you know, it would sort of be above the line. You know, they were every now and then. At the end of the night, at the end of the day, they, you know, rap party. Okay. Uh-huh. I saw it then. Oh, really? I was, uh-huh. you know, I maybe even partook a little bit. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? But I was like, I couldn't afford to buy it. You uh-huh. know what I mean? This shit uh-huh. was expensive. It's really it's probably more expensive 50, back then. 50 bucks a day. You, know, you can't afford a cocaine habit. When you're working right. like four days a month, you know, yeah. I'm mowing lawns up in Woodstock in the meantime. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And I'm not working full time yet. Uh, if my father has a gig or Freddie Lincoln is like, hey, Ron, I need a PA. Is it sound available? Yeah, so I'll send him in. You know, we'll, we'll, oh, we'll come cool. to town to stay at my place and uh-huh. we'll go to, on the subway to work for you and pick up the equipment. You can drive. <laughs> I could drive. That was helpful. Yeah, that's cool. Must have been. I mean, it had to be exciting. Was it exciting? Oh, it was great. It was great. But I wasn't really into the movies so much for the sexual part of it. I was watching porno, of course. I was watching porno since I was like 13, you know? 13. Yeah. And that was... Yeah, stealing light. movies and right. VHS and whatever I could get my hand. I wasn't much around back then, you know? Well, the magazines, you, mostly. You, well, you know. 13 years old, that would make... My friends and I had, you know... 77 of stuff, right, yeah. you know. This guy had some, you know, yeah, it's got, got a VHS I found, you know, whatever, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, teenagers, you know, we do our thing. But uh, I wasn't so much in it for the sex as it was about making movies. As a kid, I was like Star Wars, and I, dad had bought me a, a, an 8 millimeter camera. So I was like 10 years old and, you know, making little Star Wars movies and animated stuff and, Really? Blowing up army men in the sandbox, with firecrackers and stuff like so, that. So you, Making movies like that. So you really wanted to make movies? I was into the special effects and stuff. I was just fascinated with that stuff. And your father wa- wanted to make movies. He did make movies. Yeah. That's interesting. So. Well, my father's thing was about personalities and relationships and those interactions and getting into the psyche of people's issues and making movies about that. He was like, kid, what do you care, you care about special effects? Of, you know, learn, learn acting, you know, yeah. and writing. He was, right, right. That's what he thought I should get into. Get into directing, get into the, like the human relationship thing. That's what my dad was into. And his take on, the, on, on, on a porno movie was like, every, anybody who walks into a porno theater, and knows, they know what they're going to see. They're going to see people having sex, right? They don't know what they're going to say. And that's what he brought to the table. It was dialogue during the sex scene, character in the sex, like and fucked up, angst and you know versus celebration, uh, versus guilt, and all the drama of maybe extramarital affairs and taboo things and you know the the shame of it and that made it even more fun, you know all those things that came together in a sexual situation where there's all so much more drama can unfold in a sexual situation and just like in a non-sexual situation or something, you know. Yeah. I remember, you know, just came to me. I remember being at a house, a location in Woodland Hills, one of Jim's house probably, Jim South's, you know, shooting houses. Your father was directing, your father used to direct for Jim's movies. They worked together or something, right? Mm-hmm. And he had me talking some hard dialogue during it, I think while I'm having sex. Some around there, I think, you know, I was like, just came to me. It's like sometimes they put you in difficult positions, right? Because you're young and you're got to talk while you're having sex. Think, talk. You know, it's a little more difficult than yeah. just zoning out having sex. Yes, I'll give you an example. I still refer to this once in a while. We did an anal movie a couple days ago. We also have to do a softcore version of this. Now, how do you put those two together, right? The dialogue is about anal. The jokes are about anal. The, Cash Markman script and stuff like this. Cash Markman still? <laughs> they bought, yeah. I'm wow. sure he's recycling old stuff. Oh, okay. God bless him. <laughs> the, uh, so how do you convert the dialogue into a non, non-anal dialogue for the softcore version? I mean, it gets complicated, right? Well, I can remember my dad being on a set, the producer over here, and he tells the guy, he says, hey, you know, start, start playing around with the, uh, you tell him to, you know, put a finger on your asshole or something like that. And the producer's like, no, no, we can't use that. And it's like, he says, okay, tell him not to touch you there. Everybody knew what she was talking about. 
without saying a word, without saying that. See how we flipped it like that? And it made it that much more obvious. I'm like, don't touch me there. You know, what's he doing? He's, he's just put it in the other court. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He was really good at turning things on their head like that and making them stronger. <laughs> right. so, don't touch me there. I'm not ready for that. Maybe next time if you're good. You sound like your father a lot, you know, your voice. I, I work on it. Huh? <laughs> no, your voice. I've inherited that. Yeah. People <laughs> tell you that? Yeah. All the time. When I answer the phone, it sounds just like your father. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. I get that a lot. So, so then, but when was the first movie your father directed? It wasn't Devil Miss Jones, number two, right? No, I think it was The Budding of Brie, I think. That may have been the first successful one. Porno movie. Yeah, that's the one I know. <coughs> what year do you think that was? Just 1980, <coughs> 79, so, something like that. So for sure he really didn't do anything porno-wise in the 70s, really. Not really. <coughs> they would do, they were, I guess they called them exploitation movies, would be the best way to put it. Because there is a lot of nudity in it, but not very graphic stuff. And there may have been sexual situations, but you never really saw anything, or it was very dark and shadowy with a lot of pubic hair. You really couldn't see the contact, mm-hmm. but it was implied. Uh, I remember they, uh, the whole crew came up to the house in Woodstock and shot some s- scenes for a horror movie in some of these old, rundown buildings that, that uh, like little cottages that were just rotting in the forest back then. They look scary. They look scary. They I've were s- scary. I've seen them in Georgia. Yeah, right? there you the, go. And they look moss like, growing inside them and they slugs look scary. on the walls. Oh, they're grim. <laughs> we use that as a set. You know, had a mattress and an axe and red paint, and someone right. gets chopped up there. And you know, uh-huh. these were splatter movies. They call them. Oh yeah. I don't know if they know if they ever saw the light of day. At least in the states, you know, they might not have ever been released. And the Evil Dead was kind of like a splatter movie, a little bit, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. but they probably had a little bigger budget or yeah. better distribution uh-huh. contacts, or whatever the case is. But that was the kind of stuff that my dad was working on before the adult market. There wasn't really an adult market other than like, you know, uh, uh, The Devil and Miss Jones or um, Last Tango in Paris. Uh, you know, and these were single X movies. They didn't call them triple X movies. Uh-huh. They were single X movies. And out in the country, go see them in obscure drive-in movie theaters. You know, The Midnight Show or something like that. It was all adult stuff, maybe. Uh-huh. Or non-rated stuff. Uh, Clark Regandre was unrated. Caligula, maybe. Okay. Bob Guccione. Yeah. This was about 1980 also. So, Before I, then, yeah. there wasn't much. But there was porno. A lot of porno was being shot. Not that much. There weren't that much to choose from. I mean, you had to go to Times Square to see a porno movie, Uh basically. And it was the same porno movies running year after year. Could you know? Could you were watching them? Well, my dad's office was in Times Square. I wasn't watching them, but they were on the marquees. Everybody knew they were there. I mean, uh, you know, I'm talking about the the classics like Devil and Miss Jones and, uh, oh, what was the other one that was uh, everybody knew? Um... Well, deep uh, throat. Deep throat. Deep throat. Right. Those two were always playing. And behind the green door. That came next. That came in seventy two. Oh, was that okay? Well, these Devil, was, right. Thomas Jones seventy two. Okay. Behind the green door seventy two seventy three. That was what was up there. There wasn't a lot. You know, I guess you know Larry Flint with the Hustler magazine kind of opened the door a little bit to this. Hey, you know. Sex is art. Art can be sex. You can have both. It's, a, you know. Huh? And uh, people started, you know, if, they, if these guys can show their movie, I can show my movie. We were undercover all the time. None what? of this was legal. All right, illegal. This was all, you know, if you got caught doing this, you were arrested for prostitution or pandering. You know, it wasn't until 87 that, that it was legalized in the Supreme Court. Was that 87 or was that 88? And we can thank Hal Freeman for that. Yeah. Eight, well, maybe uh, cases 87, by 88 it was yeah. legal, right? It killed him, right. That fight killed him. Did you know Hal? Well, they won nine to nothing. So I'm sure economically it put him under. No, no, yeah, the, the stress. It was years oh, and years. Oh, the stress, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, he I mean, died after. Yeah. But the Supreme Court over nine to nothing. 
That's great, yeah. That this was not, you could not charge these people for pandering and prostitution. This was work for hire mm -hmm. and publication, which yeah. makes it a whole other thing. Uh, uh, you publicize something that gives a whole other legal stature. Yeah, right? people, people don't really know for sure, but there you go. Porno was illegal to 87 or 88, yeah. the Hal Freeman decision. Right. And he fought and spent millions of dollars. Yeah. And it killed him, really killed him oh, was, to yeah. win because it was, I thought it was over a six, seven year battle or something like that. Some right. large, long battle. And, uh, you know, it and was. Every, yeah. And, oh, Larry and, Flint got a bullet in his back, to, you know, during this period, too. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, people versus. Yeah, Larry a lot Flint. of weird shit going on. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, all through the 90s, too. I mean, they did, it was legal, but it wasn't like people liked it. I mean, the Mies Commission. You know, they're no. all looking at, you know, different states had different the, laws. Yeah, the Mies Commission was 81, 82, I think, right? Into the 90s. Really? 91, yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah, and post-Reagan. Yeah, to, it kind of tapered off around then, but uh, they had a different issue back in 91. You know, it's kind of, they faded away after Well, they were entrapping people to yes. send video out to, you know... Um, Alabama, Georgia. State you know, to state the, at different issues, you know, and they'd catch you. You know, the FBI would call you from obscenity. Georgia or something and yeah. get you to send something from the warehouse, and sure enough, they'd put you in cuffs. Like Russ that. Hampshire had to go to jail, VCA. You know, uh, Stagliano was fighting this. They entrapped him, too. You know, but he won in the end. Well, he's, yeah, he's, he's smart, yeah. Yeah. You know, we owe these people, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, Stagliano had to fight just... Uh -huh. ten, eight years ago, nine years ago, Stagliano fought, you're saying, right? Yeah. Yeah, his was, he was a, going through this a recent when, one. When yeah. my father was still alive, 2008. Oh, Stagliano was still going through it? He was back then. Oh, okay, so it's more than, so it's uh, 12, 13 years ago then. It's quite a while now. Yeah, all right, with yeah. Stagliano, all right. Yeah. Well, yeah, Stagliano was smart, and he's, he's I'm happy he too. beat him. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know what I mean? They just come after more people. But, um, Back to, so I didn't really understand, I didn't know that. So really your father started directing 79 or 80. And so then did you, that was the first time you got introduced to any of the porno girls was on Devil and Miss Jones or did you? Yeah. Yeah? The, the, yeah, Devil 2, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, and PT came along. He was performing back then. Yeah. I, uh, I forget what show I met him on. It was probably the third or fourth show or something like that. But he became a recurring guy. He was one of my dad's favorite people. Really? Yeah, I really enjoyed watching PT on your show oh, yeah, a couple yeah. nights ago. Yeah, it just it brought yeah, back a lot of stuff. He's you know? very interesting He's a very cool guy, very interesting guy. I learned a lot from him. And PT learned a lot from my dad. Really? And I think my dad learned a lot from him. Yeah, they used to work together <laughs> producing, right? Mm -hmm. I heard that. They had a partnership out here for a while. Uh -huh. PTRS Productions. Paul Thomas, Ron Sullivan Productions. Really? Yes. Well, you, well you, that was like early 80s? Mid uh, 80s, mid -80s uh, early mid 80s, uh, business was getting slow in New York. The video was here to stay. Uh, mm -hmm. So the budgets were going down. They were shooting a lot more in California. They didn't want to spend money on shipping people to the East Coast. What for? Uh, you know, making movies for a tenth of what the cost of film is huge, expensive, right? So with video, it was a lot cheaper, right? You didn't have all that processing and stuff. So dad and myself, we're, we're both looking for work, and we know that we, sometime we've got to get to the West Coast because New York is drying up. There wasn't much work out there after a while. Come 84, 85, you know, it's getting thin. Did you see Herschel Savage in those days Yes, in yes, New York? yes, there's another name. Yes, certainly. How, how was he as a performer? He was good. Because he told me that he was a super performer. He was very good. Very strong? Yes. Back uh, in the day, he was very strong. That's great. I didn't know that, but he said that, and I didn't know that. You know, yeah. because the strong performers, yeah. that's, it, that's its own fraternity, right? Because yeah. that's a respectful fraternity yeah, yeah. to be strong. I, he belongs there. Yeah? Uh, yeah. That's great to hear. Yeah, I got to give him that. I love Hirsch. Yeah, he's I, a wacky dude, but I love he's him. He's a little wacky, but he's, <laughs> yeah. he's a, pretty direct. Yeah. He's a New York direct dude. Yeah. So um, he was a good performer. And a decent actor or a good actor? He's a good actor. Good actor? Yeah, yeah, he could get into the parts, too. He liked that part. He liked the acting as much as the fucking, you know. So you had, let's go through some of these actors. I want to see if you sure. saw them on the set, you know what I mean? Because, you know, I'm a porn fan. Yeah. John Leslie. You Great. saw him working Terrific. as an actor? Yeah. And he's a hell of a personality. He's a hell of a personality. That, if anybody's going to give you a run for the crown, 
Really? John Leslie. For, for performing too? Well, because he, he brought both camps. You know, he, he was a hell of an actor. Uh-huh. You know, and, uh, and brought that to the sexual situation as well. Wow. Different take. It wasn't all about, you know, fucking with the cock so much as fucking uh-huh. with your mind. Right, right. Because he could mind fuck a girl like crazy. Yeah? That was his art. Uh-huh. Yeah. Really? No, he'd fuck with his head. I not, used... not so much with his penis, maybe. Uh-huh. But, but yeah, he'd get a girl all twisted up. Believe yeah. it or not, Good stuff. I used to whisper <laughs> I used to whisper in the girl's ears all kinds of crazy shit. You would never know what I was telling the girl. <laughs> yes. But some of it was, you know, dangerous. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> right? And so, you know, I, I understand what you're saying about yeah. John, but John's great. I, I know a lot of guys do stuff like that. And the sound guys tell me, like, you should hear the shit he's telling her, man. Yeah. That should be in the movie. <laughs> It's like really? you can't even bring it out. You can't so, even bring it out. I know yeah. they can. In those days, there, in I those know. days, well, yeah, in the '90s. You know I mean, but um, right. so John was great because Herschel said, "Yeah, John's great, but he wasn't a super woodsman." I didn't think of him as a super woodsman. He was a guy who would really deliver a scene, though. Uh huh. But you know, it was a lot more than just with the penis. You know, yeah. this guy brought a, a psychology to it uh-huh. as like, let's say, Jamie Gillis. He brought, got the girl horny and excited. Yes. That's important. And a curiosity about the whole thing, which uh-huh. was a little unpredictable. Yeah. And that, that was, was interesting cool. as hell. And, and horny as hell to watch. You never knew where this shit was going, man. Uh-huh. You know, you didn't know if he was going to like walk out the door or, you know, fuck really? her in the face. You know, I have no idea. <laughs> you know? He, he was very strong. He had a strong personality. But I'm going to let you know that from all the people from the old days that I've interviewed, they all lead to one person who they perceive as the best, Jamie Gillis. Jamie Gillis is remarkable. He really is. He's a, he's a very interesting person. The thing about Jamie Gillis, whenever I saw him, I used to be a fan of Jamie Gillis. He was in some of the first shit I've ever watched. And... He brought a darkness to it. Yeah, you didn't know where this shit was going. You know, it was like this guy is downright evil. He's gonna get this girl to do the most wicked shit ever, right? And he did. And then you meet Jamie in person. This guy could hurt a flea. He's the most gentlest guy ever. He's so nice to be with. He's just kind. Wonderful. I love him. He's wearing his little like massage beads and sweatpants, and he's just laid back. And how about you guys want to smoke a joint? Just Harmless. <laughs> he brought something else to the scene. I don't know where it comes from. Yeah. His darkness, but <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> well, he was, and he he would always he'd take the girl to the back when he talked with her. I don't know what the hell he said to her, but this girl played along. Yeah. He said the right things. You know, I wish I knew his secrets, because <laughs> these girls went to some dark places with him. And they finished, and they were fine. They were like, they finished a scene with Jamie Gillis. Give me a stripe, you know what I really? mean? Yeah, yeah. kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. He was a he was a really cool dude. He was from very, from my opinion. I work with I, him side by side. Okay. You know, in 1990. I think he's living in New York with somebody. I'm not sure. The last I heard. He's Jamie not, Gillis. Not in San Francisco anymore. I'm not even sure if he's alive. No, he's dead. He's Is been he dead? Ten years. Is he really? Yeah. See, I don't know what rock I've been under, but <laughs> it's not the same one Jamie Gillis was under. Because, you know, he kind of disappeared for a while. You know, no one knew where he was. My brother would hire him. Really? Yeah. No shit. My brother was pulling his hair out in 2006 with the uh, 2257 laws that uh-huh. you had to get all this database, digital data space oh, and yeah. IDs on. Try to get a Jamie Gillis' ID in color. Uh-huh. <laughs> He read a lot of scenes for Nathan. Really? Yeah. That's a trip. How do you sell that? Really? He yeah, did? Yeah, that was a big problem for him. He couldn't sell that because he didn't have the credentials. Oh, yes. This... So he had to re-edit well, some of this stuff because he mm-hmm. just didn't have the, you know, back then he didn't, you know, a black and white photocopy of a driver's license. You could barely read it. Jim Gillis, like 60 years old. He was not of age. You know what I mean? <laughs> he yeah. vented this business practically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, gotta, right. I mean, yeah. Gotta have it, but legally, right? Jamie Gillis is before pretty much all the stars. Pretty much, I think. Been around quite a while. How about John Holmes? You meet John Holmes? I did not meet John Holmes. Okay. I've never met him. What about so I met Harry Reams. How was he? I, I hardly remember. 
Okay. I, you know, I was like a production manager at the time on the set, and he did a performance. I don't know if it went terribly well. He just kind of came back after retirement, actually, right. to do a stint for another guy I was working with in New York. So I don't really know how it went. I, I think that if you're an actor and you're, it's similar to being a professional athlete. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If you're gone for a little while, like a boxer or something, you know, unless you're Mayweather, unless you're a special person, it's going to be a little more difficult to get your rhythm on your second go around, especially oh, yeah. if you're older. Yes. Without the help of, you know, pharmacy. Yes. You know what I mean? So I feel that myself. As, yeah. a, as a cameraman in this business today, it's a new generation, man. Yeah. It's another game. It's faster. It's it's an aerial game. It's not a ground game. You know what I mean? Drones just, and moving around. Uh, yeah. You know, all kinds of new gadgets. And, you know, I don't know how this shit works. You know. <laughs> I love those drones. They're, they're, they're radical. Interesting. I, it's, um, I have my own ideas on those things. I like them, too, as a fax, you know. But it, you know, whoever gets to see the world from way up there, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's not something humans identify with. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's a lot of the psychology and the camera work and framing and stuff like that. The drone is its own thing, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a god's eye. No one, no one sees the world like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. At least those look-down shots. But like Steadicam, uh -huh. you know, you can do the similar thing mm -hmm. with that and follow along. Oh, yeah, with the drone, yeah. yeah. It's radical. It's very cool stuff with it, sure. Great for film, great for war. They're great for a lot of yeah. things. Well, we used to have to get in a truck with a crane and chase someone down the street yeah. in a convertible or whatever, uh -huh. go down and block off the, you know, control traffic, all that stuff. We don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, like how much cheaper it is. It's unbelievable. It's fired up. Use the cell phone and drive the right. drone, this man. It's wild. I love 4K, it. you know. Oh, my God. No film. You know, big magazines full of 10-minute loads this big. Uh, heavy. Right, right, right. Yeah, weigh about 10 pounds. Right, yeah, film, yeah, right. It's heavy. So, so Jerry Butler, you said, was great. Yeah. Okay performer, but not a super performer, right? Right. Buck Adams, what about Buck? Good performer. Oh, Buck Adams, I'm glad you brought him up. Yeah. Buck Adams was quite a good performer, too. Uh -huh. Yeah, he was, a good, he was a woodsman, yep. for sure. Uh -huh. And he could act, too. Yeah, I've seen him. Yeah. yeah, he's had some chops. Yeah, he won Best Actor once or twice. Mm -hmm. They, people appreciated him. Yeah, I had some yeah. fun with Buck back in New York. It was interesting. Yeah. Back in the day. Not New York, though. In New York. New York? He came out to do Down and Out in New York City. Really? Directed by Jack Remy. No shit. And Jack hired me to do script and continuity and assist him on the show. Because, you know, Ron Son and I, uh -huh. I was into editing yeah. and I... And technical head, and I kept the notes for John, uh, Jack Remy, and uh, you know we, we got to know each other. That's like the first time I really worked with him. Uh -huh. Was in Queens, New York. Wow, that's a and trip. out comes Buck Adams. He was loud and proud, or how was he? Loud Quiet? and proud. We did some naughty recreational stuff together back in the day. And they said what drugs? Yeah, he loved drugs. Yeah, he did cocaine. And I knew to where I knew where to get him. Uh -huh. So what year was right, this? Right on the street corner. <laughs> you know, it was, like, was not yeah. sexy, believe me. Yeah. Uh, rock cocaine or just cocaine? I believe it was rock cocaine. <laughs> rock cocaine was everywhere back then. Yeah. I don't want to say it was like 80, the girls? 84 or 83. Oh, or 83. Like New York. Yeah, maybe wow. even 85. I don't know. Probably well, 84. Cool. How did he look? Was he in great shape? Strong? Yeah, he was strong. He was, he was in his prime then. He, yeah. was, he was quite good. Maybe get a little older, a little yeah. longer in the tooth, but still had, you know, he had that athletic thing of still yeah. working for him. He kept in good shape, too. He, looked, he was a, he did a sparring See, in boxing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 yeah, a little he, boxing, he said. He was solid. He was a little unpredictable, too. Was he? Oh, yeah. Was he aggressive on the sets? or Sometimes. Really? Yeah. So he would be challenging to some other actors? I, I, I don't know about other actors. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. He, liked, he liked to do things his way, for sure. As any guy who's gonna, you know, control their own sexual environment needs to be uh -huh. in our business, a little take what you need, do what you need, you know, uh -huh. make it yours kind of thing. Mm -hmm. He certainly did that. Do the girls like him? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because well, he took control and, and, you know, he drove it. Yeah, yeah. They could sit oh, back and ride, you know? Yeah. It's oh, good. he he came to my apartment one day and yeah. said, uh, you had no place to stay? Yeah. So you can stay at night. He left seven months later. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, he was head up very up and down. Oh yeah, but I history. loved him. He was, yeah. he was interesting. That was 1990. Lethal mm -hmm. Passion. 
We shot a Lethal Passion part of it in my apartment. Okay. Yeah. Sounds right. Is he directing? Yeah. Yeah, and, like, and sleeping on your couch. Yeah. Yeah, right on. That's about right. That's <laughs> how we do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what about... Um, so some of these other actors you had... Well, that's that's really the well, Joey, you know Joey's. Oh, Joey, yeah. Silvera. I've seen so little of Joey today. I hear about him every once in a while because we have a friend, you know, that keeps us informed. You and I both know John L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His name. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, the uh, I've always admired Joey's work. Joey did some of the funniest goddamn stuff, man. I, he was one of the weirdest guys ever, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He stood out in the movies to me. I liked him. He oh, seemed just, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was creative. But he was like the guy with the plate in his head. You know, you never knew where he was going yeah. because, you know, he just, uh, like a Woody Harrelson almost. Off the wall, yeah. Yeah. Very funny shit. He cracked me up. He's always a nice guy on those days, in those days, too. Mm -hmm. He's... A, but he was in New York. He was a Frisco guy. Did he come to New York or you saw him in L.A.? He would come to New York uh, quite a bit, actually. He, he was another uh, regular in New York. Huh. I thought he lived in New York. I had no idea that he He's was... He's from New York, but... Oh, is that right? He got his beginning in Frisco, he told me. Okay. Yeah. I like Joey a lot. He's great. I love him. Uh, good soul. Yeah. Yeah, he's wonderful. So what about... So that, that's kind of like those guys. No, Randy West. Randy West. Yeah, another good guy. Good guy, right? Yes. Solid. Yes. Very solid dude. Yeah. I played football with Randy West, and uh, we used to play tag t uh, flag football, not f touch football, whatever. And uh, Beverly Hills at a park there at the bottom of Coldwater Canyon. Bill Margold used to put this together. Oh, I heard about that. And uh, Richard Parnes, he would come out and play. Uh, Jay Shanahan would play. Really? Wow. Andy Abrams came out. Andy Abrams got to throw a football, man. A, that he, guy's got an arm. He looks fairly strong. I thought he played really. baseball. He, he was a baseball guy, really, but he could hum a football, man. He'd put a football right through a wall. Really? Yeah, I could throw. He's strong. Yeah. He looked kind of strong a little bit. He right? was strong. Very athletic guy. He's six foot tall, about 195 to me. It looked like. Yeah, was, older guy, but he was in shape, man. Uh -huh. This guy could run. Really? He could throw. It was oh, good to have on your team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's cool. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these guys, you guys in the business are athletes, man. I always told you, gladiators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know? but so, um, yeah, he seemed like a hell of a guy. I mean, of course, I work next to him, you know what I mean? And all uh -huh. that. What about um, the, new, the new breed? So those are kind of like the old breed, the 70s and the early 80 guys, but the early, almost to the mid 80s, here you got Tom and Mark. Tom, Tom Byron. Tom Byron, Mark Wallace. Yes. Did I you? met those guys. Actually, I met those guys in New York. Oh, yeah? Both of them? Uh, certainly uh, Vicky Vickers and Tom Byron. Vicky Vickers. That's... They came that's, out to um, do Taboo American stuff. Yeah, right. That's for, a great... miniseries, Vicky man. Vickers is actually Raven. Yes. The beautiful that's Greek right. goddess that's right. Raven. Right. That's right. All right. It's so a Cherokee blood in her, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. A beautiful and girl. Greek, right. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, she came to town. We did this whole show out in Asbury Park, New Jersey. Asbury Park, New Jersey, huh? Yes. I think we, that's where my girl's from. We did. We did. Really? Wow. Yeah. We did, uh, I guess it was 12, 13 days out there. Maybe 11 of it was in Asbury Park. Taboo was a cool movie. Yeah. Four pieces. Were you, that. that was 85? Yeah. 84, maybe. Ah. I, it might have got finished in 85. You know what I mean? It took a while to do really? all four movies. Film. Oh, four 30, movies, okay. 35 okay. millimeter. Yeah, it's a miniseries. Oh, right, right. It's a four-part miniseries, right? A 35 millimeter is huge. So a lot of cocaine well, down in those days. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> Amazing on the we set? Got the finding of this. On the set? Yeah. <laughs> That's when I really started to become aware of this. I had really? to actually talk with my dad about this. I, it's like son-to-dad talk. Like, dad, getting out of hand. You got a real Oh, respect. really? Dad's doing a lot of cocaine? I, I had to... Call it. <laughs> yes. Really? I had to call so, it. I had to step up, man, and say something. Well, <laughs> oh, yeah? Which was awkward for me as I was probably 19 at the time or whatever it was, oh, and, you know, so. 20 maybe. You know, so I had a conversation like this with my dad. I didn't grow up with my dad. We were buddies. I we were so. party buddies. We were going out snorting, drinking. Really? Fooling around. <laughs> that's, what, that's what me and my dad did. We oh, worked funny. together, partied together, goofed off, fucked off together. Fucked girls together? 
not together. Okay. So oh, the same yes. ones, a little bit. You know, same, I mean, we ended up like same YouTube, radius. You know, <laughs> it was called same fire. apartment. Next, yeah. Yeah, a little bit yeah. of that. A little officer and a gentleman going on there. You know, uh-huh. <laughs> it's kind of fun. But uh, yeah, you too. You know, I thought, okay, your turn. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. So, so that sounds great. So the cocaine was flying. A little too much. Things weren't getting done. They weren't getting done. That's what Spin I was... Spin circle. I got you. Yes. A lot of talk, no action kind uh-huh. of shit going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was, everybody's all excited about nothing, but you guys don't have this shit covered yet. You uh-huh. weak, and I'm taking the notes. I know. Oh, right. That, yeah. Well, you, this take sucks. That take sucks. You all think you're geniuses, but it's all fucked up. Right. And I'm, I had to let him know. I said, you guys... Did that help? Lost your fucking mind. Yeah. Following week, he was much better. This went on for, you know, two weeks or whatever, shooting this movie. So it was How pretty was Raven? Beautiful. Then? Beautiful. Beautiful. She was part of the action, too. Everyone wanted a she piece liked, of her. So oh. you want some Tuski? She's young. She's fine. beautiful. Everybody's fucking her. Everybody's, everybody's fucking her? No. No? No. Everyone was doing Tuski. I don't know who was fucking her. But, I mean, you can't really do a good performance if you're on that... That's how I feel about it. Right. Now, I saw your interview with PT, who swears by this stuff. Right. right. And I'm like, dude, I can't do nothing on this stuff. I get so distracted and confused. I, I don't know how the hell. I can't focus, man. No, but in honest. I can lose interest. I'm not like, oh, man, I feel like spiders are crawling on me. I don't want to do that. On <laughs> a know? set? On a set? With everybody watching? And it doesn't, I don't know how you could do it. I don't either. But did you see any actors do it? They were all doing it. And they were performing? Yeah. Wow. But yeah, some of them better than others. Some of them. Doesn't work for everybody. Some could actually perform though? Some of them not. Yeah, mostly not. I feel that. I don't know for sure. I wasn't shooting this stuff back then. Okay. I was, uh, you know, script and continuity guy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was like, well, you know, this is kind of limp. Well, try the end of the roles a little better. This position's stronger than that one. If I had to take notes like that, that ain't exactly impressive. You Uh know what I mean? Yeah. I'm working for the editor now. I'm what? helping this guy in the back, like, hope he can make a movie out of this. And I'm thinking, not so much. So, But P.T. was on that movie, right? He was. He was a big part of that. And so he was playing around with the powder? I can't think of anybody who wasn't. Okay. I mean, including myself. Right. I mean, I wasn't like uh-huh. Mr. Pure it guy or something. Great, though. You know what I mean? So, but it was just vodka, cocaine. So it's everywhere. <laughs> taboo American style yeah. was a big cocaine fest. You could look at it that way. It was a big work like fest, it. too. I mean, everybody was, oh, yeah. we're all hustling, trying to do, you know, make a movie. It's sometimes we just think we're doing a better job than we really are. Right, it's delusional. Know, that's the truth of it. Jamie Gills was there, right? No. No, he wasn't on that set? I don't believe so. Who were the actors? Uh, Arbola. Arbola. Gloria Leonard. Uh-huh. P.T. Tom Byron. Uh, the young lady you just mentioned, Raven. Uh, I want to say, here's a name out of the past. You might like this one. Tasia Ray. Oh, yeah. Otherwise she known. She looks so cute. But before then, she was known as Sharon Piper. Really? No, but not too many people know that. Sharon Piper. Yeah, she made only a couple movies under that name. She looked really cute. Was she, she cute? Was, she was great. Yeah. She was terrific. How tall was she? Oh, I don't know. She's she short? Tall. Not really. I mean, normal height. No, you know, four, f- five, five, four? Five foot something. No, she was a little taller than that. Really? Five, five, huh? Five, six? Uh, five something. Uh-huh. I don't remember her being. She was cute as fuck? She's cute as fuck. She looked... I jacked up to her a lot as a kid. Great personality, too. Really? Sweet. Just a sweetheart. She's a New York girl, right? She, I think I... Or, no, or New Jersey or Pennsylvania. East Coast. East Coast, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I want to say Pennsylvania. Or Philly, maybe. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. She seemed like a country girl to me. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. She looks sexy. Yeah. She was on, on um, Taboo American Style. I believe she was Richard Bola, who played the... Like the groundskeeper, the gardener, I think she played his daughter, if I remember correctly. It was all part of the, you know, well, they're the lower class people. You're not supposed uh-huh. to socialize with them. That's like the chauffeur's daughter or something. You know what I mean? Like that, where these other folks are all rich and howdy-towdy and, of course, getting their 
getting in trouble, dipping their pen and company ink and yeah, uh, fucking around with each other and lusting after one another and all this kind of stuff. I wonder if Joey was in that. There was another movie we did with uh, uh, Jerome Piper was the lead for. Uh, uh, Joey was in this. Um, Jerry Butler. This was She's So Fine. It's a big uh, Sharon Piper movie. PT is also uh-huh. in this. Um, Sharon Mitchell is in this one. What about this girl? I brought it up to Herschel Savage the other day. Yeah. Who really, when I used to look at her, she really, because I like the girls with the fat ones, you know, fat, fat nannies. Nipples? No, fat. Just fat tits. No, pussies. Oh, f- oh, okay. Right? Yeah. And she, look, her body was hard. She just had this fire, and Herschel Savage confirmed it with me. A girl named Danielle, blonde. Martin? It was Danielle just, da- Martin? just Danielle, it was. I don't know. Did she have a voice like this? Yeah. That's Lisa, the girl. She was voice. great. She was great? Yes. Yes. She was one of my favorites. Really? She was so cool. Hot, right? Something? She was like Debbie Diamond before Debbie Diamond. Uh-huh. Yeah, she was I'm a bit s- like that. She looked sexy as fuck. She was sexy. She yeah. was kind of a little bit tomboyish, actually. Farm girl, Strong, country girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Body. Shoulders, you know what I mean? And the ass, right? Yeah. Killer body. Right. Small breasts. Right. But, but great looking. Real fat looking vagina. Beautiful look. I, I still remember yeah. it from 1980s. I don't remember And it I so. haven't seen it okay. since 1980s, but it never left my mind. A movie with Tom Byron. They play the same person. Tom Byron and Danielle Martin. Really? And you know who's also in that one is Karina Collins. It's called. Oh, I forget her sometimes. Karina was hot as hell. Unna- I work with her. Unnatural phenomenon. Oh yeah, wow. Jerry T's Western Visuals. Jerry Tenenbaum, or yeah, what the hell? It's a two-part movie, but uh, my dad directed for him. Oh yeah. Yeah, and they change sex every twenty-eight days. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, unnatural phenomenon. Tom Byron turns into Danielle. She was Danielle hot. Back huh? in the name, say, "Oh, where's your sister?" They're both named Jean. Oh, really? Oh, she's in Vegas. She'll be back in a couple of weeks. And they say, hey, where's your brother? Oh, he's, I think he's in Vegas taking care of some business. He'll be back in a couple of weeks. And they both see the fortune teller, Karina Collins. It's really confused. Because <laughs> you can read the minds of two sexualities in one person. It's an interesting movie. Well, Queen of Collins was another She's dynamite. Very hot, hot performer. sexy. But this is the early. I, I ran into this her is in the eighties now. Ninety two, I think. Okay. I think, or no, ninety four. I think it was. I think ninety three, ninety four. The Queen of Collins. I worked with her three or four times. Okay. She was wonderful, but when she, in the eighties, I mean, she was prettier, right? She was younger and prettier. So Jeez. how hot so, was she? Was she hot as hell? She, she was hot as hell. I mean, I didn't know her other than editing her because I was oh, okay. editing for, for Western Visuals. I had actually not actually met her on the set ever. Uh, Curiously enough, the first time I ever met her, when she, after she had retired or she quit for a while or whatever, she was a checker at the Alpha Beta. Whoa. And I recognized her. I didn't say anything. I didn't want to like... But I looked at her and I'm sure she felt that, oh, this guy knows who I am. Uh-huh. And I did because I smiled and I was like... I heard she was working at a grocery store or something. What, what area? Woodland Hills or the Valley? Van Owen Street. Van Owen Street. Van Owen? <laughs> at the time, yeah. Van I mean, Owen and I don't think the grocery store is even there. No, let's, see, let's see, Van Owen and Sepulveda. I see it right oh, there. Oh, all right. Yeah, right near the 405. Kind of like Panorama City, Van Nuys area. Van Nuys. That's actually yeah. right next to Western Vigils. Just pretty close. Not far. Yeah. <laughs> I had an apartment near there for a while, too. So I walked to that grocery store, actually. Elliot got me in the business. Elliot Siegel? Yeah. No shit. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I just liked Elliot. That's a trip, right? So I liked a, him. He was great. Elliot's intense. Intense. He had such a great game. His vocabulary and salesmanship were out of this world, I thought. Yes. I got along good with Elliot. I'm not sure everybody else did. I liked him a lot, yeah. Yeah. No, he speaks the truth, man. Yeah, right? <laughs> he's great. let you read, know exactly where things were at. <laughs> I appreciate that kind of thing. You yeah. know what I mean? I grew up with, you know, a lot of my bosses were tough bosses. They didn't uh-huh. play games. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. In New York, you got to hustle a little bit. My stepdad was a very straight shooter. And if you put us kids to work, you better get it right or you're doing it again. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> those half-ass shit. 
Well, that's great. That's a great to it's be great brought up that way. Yeah. yeah. You don't appreciate that till later on in your life. A teenager, you, can, you don't give a fuck. But, <laughs> but you learn something, I mean, and then you take it with you later. You know, it teaches you how to make a quality product. It teaches you ethics, work ethics. Yeah, yeah. finishing. No, no you because know, you don't want any it. asshole can start. Yeah. A pro finishes. Yeah, you know, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, to keep the struggle going. Yeah. And with all the stuff on your back, it takes certain type of. Men, women, or personalities to make it through, right? Yeah. You know, to make you know. Also, learn something about this too. This kind of goes about the presidency of the United States as well. I'm going to say something. A lot of people aren't going to like this. You don't have to like the captain of the ship. He's the captain of the ship. He's going to get the ship back to port in the shittiest of weather. So believe it or jump ship. The choice is yours. <laughs> you right. know. Yeah. Hey, he's right. He's he's got the wheel. You deal with it. You don't have to like the yeah. boss. You don't have to like the boss. He's your boss. Ride with it. He'll look out for you. You might not like him, uh -huh. but he's got your best interests in mind. <laughs> they have a saying, you know, that it says, anybody can steer the ship, right, in normal waters. In normal waters. But who can steer the ship? What type of integrity and strength does it take to steer the ship in a storm? Right. You know, because you're going to die. Yeah. When you, you know? can't see the stars, you got to, how are you going to get home, you know? Yeah. yeah. That kind of stuff. Yeah, well, you know, when you got 50, 100 foot waves coming at you. Yeah. How do you deal with that? And I also think it takes a bigger asshole to champion the rest of these assholes. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, mean, I don't want to get into all that. We don't want to get in that, but yeah. <laughs> I understand you and, yeah. you know. I respect that. You know what I mean? Just, look, you don't have to like the guy who's in charge. He's in charge. And then you got to trust it. And I grew up New York style, which is, mm -hmm. you know. Either this way or you get fucked up. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So anyways. so, so Another back. guy will take your place, no problem. Yeah. Yeah, it's either <laughs> yeah. do it or get this, your ass beat or, or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so Tom and Mark came. You know, they're like a little bit new generation with Peter North. Yes. Peter North came pretty much after them. But very close proximity. How did you see those guys? I met, uh, I got along great with, uh, I got along good with Tommy, of course, you know, because we're like the same age, really. And, uh, you know, of course, he was fucking uh, raving, you know, so everyone was kind of envious of him. Oh, yeah, he got that? Yeah. <laughs> he was part of the show. <clears throat> oh, 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 but not yeah. off camera. Oh, I don't know, oh, you yeah. know, but it's certainly okay. on camera. Right. I'll and, let you know, me and Raven snuck in the back yeah. room a couple times. I believe it. She was great. Uh, <laughs> okay, good for you. <laughs> But uh, she seduced I, me a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, no, she's very. She can seduce anybody. Not not crazy, but just a little touch. You know what I mean? I think she tried to seduce me once. Yeah. But she was after something else. Oh, okay. First of all, I was the director's son, and I had connections. Oh yeah. So well, there was. Oh. She was looking for that. Really? Oh. Yeah. And she I was, was like, "You're barking up the wrong tree. I don't make that kind of money. Oh, yeah. Ask him." <laughs> you know, she was sweet, so nice. But she tried to pull a few, you know, yeah. strings there, you know. But she was a very nice person, so sweet. I know she was. Yeah, I met her later again. I yeah. didn't see her for years. I met her in California, yeah. and on some other stuff, probably on a Fred show, Freddie Lincoln show. I want to bet. Uh -huh. so, uh, and then her brother Walter was working uh, on, uh, on, set. on the set too. Yeah. So two of them. But uh, Mark and um, and uh, Peter North. And, I, you know, I got to know those guys a little bit at a time. I know Mark and uh, Tommy were living together in, like, in Northridge for a little while. I didn't know those guys so well. I mean, you see them on the set and all that kind of thing. But I wasn't a big hanger out or I didn't yeah. go to a lot of parties and that kind yeah. of stuff and, and that kind of thing. But I did get along with Mark yeah. quite well. And actually, uh, when Mark was going through his shit, uh, you know, he has got ostracized pretty well. Oh, yeah. He did this to himself. Yeah. Well, because he told me, you know, he confided with me on a lot of stuff. I don't, I really have not brought forward to anybody else. You know, but I think it's a safe thing to say in this day and age. He was scared, plain and simple. That's mm -hmm. why he fucked it, fucked it up. He didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. He knew he made a mistake, and that, uh, and people were upset with him because he put other people in danger, and he knows that, and. Uh, if he had a chance to do it all over again, he would. But he really did not want to face it. 
you know, he had some recreational drug habits that weren't exactly conducive to dealing with reality either. You know, yeah. substitute a lot of things. Yeah. But I don't think he meant to hurt anybody. He was just, just no. didn't know what to do. You but know? He, no, but he, I, I put him at work for me, you know, and in my office working and reviewing movies. Mm-hmm. You know, we were friendly, pretty friendly, yeah. you know, during the, you know, the acting career. Yeah. But um, he was a very strong performer, I thought. He was. He yeah. was. He was a very strong performer. Yeah. He was a good actor, too, actually. Yeah. You know, we say performer, but we know there's, there's two different kinds of performers, right? Yeah. There's guys who really want to like get into the character and the part, and mm-hmm. like an Evan Stone would love to do all that kind of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And make a big deal. That's a big part of the career for them. Is uh-huh. being a good actor, right? Uh-huh. Measuring up to those parts, ch- challenging themselves that yeah. way, as well as fucking, you uh-huh. know, fucking anything in any situation, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. which is another, you know, type of performance. Just is probably more important, really, in this day and age. Yeah. Justice? Probably more important to be a stronger sexual performer oh, okay. than, a, than a character performer. Uh-huh. You know? Okay, I got you. Yeah. So, so, and Peter North was... Uh... Uh, Peter North was a champ. Man, actually, I hadn't heard his name in so long, but yeah, talk about another guy in the woodsman department. You yeah. know, this guy, you knew you, you were coming home in one piece if he showed up on the set, yeah. and you weren't going to be waiting for taffy pulling with this guy, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, and another fellow who really took care of himself. Oh, yeah. Very health conscious guy. You uh-huh. watch what he ate, he was like stuck to his regimen and all that kind of thing. And uh, you know, happy-go-lucky guy was never stressed out about nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah, he didn't. He never had a bad day. <laughs> no, he you know. always kept everything to himself. Or just or let it go. I don't yeah, know. He, yeah, I know. He, he seemed to be able to give you all of himself. Yeah, he's you great. Know? Yeah. And that cum shot. Uh, come on, go. one in a million, or one in probably. Matter of fact, if we want to be technical, maybe. Right, quite possible. We don't know for sure, but he might be the only person on the planet yeah. that can do that. We don't know. What? He might be the only person on the planet to shoot that far. That, no, I've seen him count down eighteen squirts. Oh yeah, Big River Brown. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you got a different name for him, Big River Brown. <laughs> that was one of my dad's names for. Him. Oh, bring him on, Big River Brown. <laughs> All right. Yes, the sir. truth is, he might be the only person on the planet. He's an X Man, right? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. On the planet. Is yeah. there anybody on the planet that could compete with a young Peter North in the cum shot? I don't think I've seen it. No, but I'm, I want, I'm asking in the world, is there? I don't know. Yeah, it's a good question. You know? Yeah. Nobody's ever come in the business that could do that. Not like that, man. No, and not even on close. the match. Totally natural, right? Yeah. Uh, pineapples and rice or whatever he does. Egg yeah. whites. I yeah, don't know. Come on. We've never seen anybody <laughs> even close. Not even close. This is way before Viagra. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. and all this stuff. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But Viagra doesn't give you a cum shot. No. not do anything. No. Right. Anyway, so anyway, Pinor is great. But um, so then we went through these girls. We'll go through the girls quick. I'm going to go through more stuff. But let's make it quick with the girls. How great did you see Ginger Lynn as? I didn't shoot Ginger Lynn. I... And I barely edited her. She kind of, I kind of missed her. I only shot her like once or twice when she was in the in the milf age, but I loved her. She was the best, the sweetest girl ever. Yeah. Ginger Lynn is terrific. And I saw her in the movies and stuff, but as a performer, she was, you know, everyone loves her work. Yeah. I didn't really see that much of her. You know, a couple of vivid shows. I know that PT had done some stuff, but... At that time, I was shooting and directing or whatever I was up to. I didn't really, like, wasn't watching everybody's work. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but yeah, I but her reputation alone yeah. was outstanding. Yeah. You know? And she's very cute. She, you know? I mean, that face yeah. and that look yeah. was priceless in those days. Yeah. I mean... And when I met her, it was like, really, she was kind of kind of out of retirement, coming uh-huh. back to do, like, a mill thing or two or whatever it was, uh-huh. and play some kink stuff or whatever. And I was like, wow, you're Ginger Lynn, huh? I was like, yeah, and she was just charming. Just yeah. a wonderful, beautiful person. <laughs> you know, I really enjoyed her. What, what, I mean, you've been working here the whole time, you know, this whole time. Yeah. You know, what girls, you have, what, you know, you have so many girls you work, I know you work with Christy Canyon numerous times. Oh, she's one of my favorites. Right? 
Yeah. She loved when you directed her, by the way. Yeah. Did oh, she ever tell wonderful. you that? Yeah, she does. Right, she uh, numerous times. Right. She says, oh, I had so much fun with you and what your shows and your shoots and stuff. And whenever you were a cameraman and working with PT and all that stuff, I just love that you were there and having you. You're always terrific. She was always very kind to me, very gracious, and always uh, appreciative. And right. I, I always felt the same way with her. She's amazing. Yeah. Person. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Spiritually, you know. Yes. And physically. Yes. No, and, she kind of reminds me of girls I grew up with a little bit. You know, very, yeah. I just identified with her right away, you know, kind of like that. She's great. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you've seen these girls. What, what girls, you know, let's go into the 90s. Okay. Okay. Which girls in the 90s stood out and blew your mind? Because you're directing almost every girl or pretty close to it. I, you know, or shooting them. I've shot more, a lot more than I direct. I've probably directed twenty, a couple dozen shows. You know, really, and mostly for uh, yes. Mostly Say that a little loud. You've only directed how many shows? A couple dozen, mostly for Vivid. Twenty four shows. Probably a little, little bit more than that. Maybe thirty something. Okay. I don't so, know. Just, yeah, not much. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any of them. <laughs> I just don't collect this stuff. Uh -huh. I was afraid I wouldn't have any place to put it. So you didn't really produce the shows either. No, uh, you Vivid. Or PT produced them. They had production managers and producers, and I would get the scripts together and coordinate some writing, and I'd figure out the locations and help with the cat, like this person in this part, and if you can, I like this and that. Work with John Doe a lot. Yeah, uh, John Chet, yeah. Yeah, he was a big part of the, the 90s. Gina Fine was another gal I worked with a lot. Well, she's from the 80s, but yeah, she came to the 90s. In the, she was huge in the 90s. Yeah. She started in the late 80s, I guess. But she kind of came out to the West Coast shortly after I did in 86. I I thought Gina Fine... I met her in New York on... Yeah, right? With Jack Remy yeah. and Buck Adams. Same shoot. That's where I first met her. Blonde hair, probably. With airplanes in her ears. And blonde mohawk. hair. Mohawk. Blo blonde hair. New age, like, right. holy shit. Cool. What is this? Yeah, upstate but, New York gal. But listen, she was gone. When I got in the business, she was gone, and she came back. Okay. She came back, from what I remember. Yeah. You know what I mean? She was terrific. She came back in 91 or something like that. Yeah. That's what I remember. She killed it. Yeah. She so was the hottest things going. She was nasty. I mean, yeah. as a performer, performance-wise. Oh, well, she brought an attitude also. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. She had strength, no, yeah. Yeah. Not she's, just a body. She's great, yeah. An attitude. Yeah, Gina Fine is definitely a standout performer. Yes. So, who else? Uh... Tasia Ray, she Tasia Ray also known. No, she's as, not the '90s. Well, she kind of did at the very '92, uh, maybe last one. No, you sure? I would have known. You would have known, okay? Because yeah, I was a fan of hers. Okay. So yeah. I want to say she is. I'll see. Tasia Ray, right? Tasia Ray, yeah. No, no, I would have been looking for okay. her. Okay, okay. I know she didn't have a long career. I'll tell you another one I liked uh, a whole lot: Barbara Dare. Oh yeah, but she's the '80s too. She quit. I want to say I probably put her together. Uh, I was editing some stuff in 89 yeah. with her, and I might have shot her in 1990. Yeah, you did. Okay. You shot her, but she wasn't doing any boy girls. Yeah, girl girls. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yes. She was hot as, she looked great. Met her in New York. Oh, yeah? In yes. the early days? Yes. She worked with PT. Oh, yeah? How hot was she? As a, under a different name. She was outstanding. Barbara Dare, yeah. What was the name? What she, was the stage name? Before she was Barbara Dare, I want to say she was Nikki Wild. No. Something no. wild. For no. one show. Not Nikki Wild. There was a Nikki Wild, and I know her. Okay. Yes. Well, maybe that's why she changed her name. Okay. But I think that she was booked herself back then. On like, she was like brand new. Uh -huh. I'm talking like 1980. Cute. So cute. Oh, my what? God. She's like a cute girl. She was in a movie called Lilith Unleashed. Uh-huh. 35-millimeter show. Another one shot in Asbury Park. Same location as the other one. Uh, something wild. It wasn't Barbara Dare. Something else. Maybe the Nikki part is wrong. Something wild. Uh, she was hot, though. Very hot. I, I, talked, very I talked to her because I was on a set with her. Yeah. You know, for PT in 1990. Maybe you shot it. You know what I mean? And um, she was in a booth. And we were the guy's looking into her on the booth, and we were jacking off. You know okay. what I mean? And I talked to her. I go, hey, I was a fan of hers, too. She's so 
pretty. She said, no, sorry, I quit working, you know. But she was super sweet. I said, hey, I want to work with you, you know. But oh, I, uh, really? Okay. I, you know, I missed it, obviously. Ah, uh, yeah. Huh. Yeah, she looked great. And then I remember she, she hired me to shoot something of her for, like, a fan club, too, you know, that she was kind of trying to circulate some of her uh, vivid content mm -hmm. and promote that kind of stuff. So I did a little project just for her. I went down to her place in Venice Beach down there at the time. And uh, she was charming, too. I really, I liked Sweet. Her. Yeah, she seemed, I only talked to her that one time. Yeah. So what? Who else? I mean, you got a lot of people in the nineties. You got Kathy Ireland or Kylie Ireland. Kylie me. Ireland, yeah. Jenna, Jenna Jameson. Jenna Jameson, she was dynamite. Brianna Banks came in ninety nine. Pretty much, you didn't see her until really two thousand. I, I like Brianna Banks. <laughs> she made me laugh. She was, she was terrific. Yeah, I was, uh, <laughs> you know, the boyfriend thing. I was a little rough with her. Oh, Vitalia. He was one. I, I one of the first guys to shoot him. Uh -huh. uh, Bobby Vitale, I put him in like the first movie I directed, which was Interview with the Milkman. Uh -huh. He was my lead. Yeah? And I had shot him for somebody else a month before, and he was brand new, and he was the stiffest, most wooden actor I'd ever seen. I said, I want him. Really? This guy's perfect. He doesn't know nothing. <laughs> I want to get him in the movie. He could fuck. He doesn't know shit about acting, and that's what I want. Yeah. He just looks like an ordinary guy. Uh -huh. He's perfect. The milkman. Uh -huh. I got and, so. and then, you know, Chet, first, you know, opposite Chet. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, a gal from uh, the Czech Republic. Her name was Laura Palmer, I believe. Tall, blonde gal. She was a lot of fun. I liked her. Uh -huh. It was a 90s gal for you. Uh, Siobhan Hunter. She's out of New York also. Uh, I don't think she did much in the West Coast. This may be pre 90s also. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. So. All right, okay, so. so who else? What, I mean, what girls, that, Gina Fine, for me, is the only girl that stands out for you. To me, you know what I mean? That's what yeah, there's a lot you. of water under this bridge. You just got to remember, like, uh -huh. what that water looks like. <laughs> right, right, right. And the names, you. you know. Okay, you. okay. So Help we me. have, you know. Um, if I can think of this show, I, I can remember, like, Devastation. I was very fond of her. I like Devastation. Well, I can't remember. You have Tabitha Stevens. Red haired. Remember yeah. Tabitha Stevens? You have um, Tabitha Stevens. Brittany and Paula Price, the sisters. Yes. Right? Yes. You had. Uh, yes. You, you had um, Debbie Diamond, of course, was all over the 90s. And Bianca. Bianca, yeah, Bianca. Bianca was wonderful. Seven. I called her, you know, she didn't use seven. Bruce she Seven's was, wife? Yes, but I called her Bianca Seven. But you had uh, Bianca was, Trump, too. I, I just, you know, I've, every now and then I have a phone call with Bianca. Yeah, she was, yeah, she, she was, was. She was very kind with uh, my dad's sickness and, uh, oh, really? and his oh. passing, and very helpful with that. And uh, we kind of got close for a minute there. But I also used to shoot some of her stuff. She was this is a kinky, bizarre shit. I'm gonna tell you about her. <laughs> Whatever she had in her, yeah, it's just you got near and you said, "Oh, right." Yeah. And then you got inside her and you said, "Oh, fuck." She's a very sexual. Something, woman. you know. Yeah. I mean, she had the. Yeah. All of it, mm -hmm. the goods. Mm -hmm. I would say she was the most pretty girl, but she was cute and sexy as hell. Yes, a gracious man. She had the southern hospitality kind of thing going with her. I don't know what it is she was exactly, just, but just charming. Just, yeah. I mean, you had to be there. Sweet as could be. Inside there, Nasty, to really appreciate it. my God. <laughs> yeah, right? She's like... Uh, PJ Sparks. Great, right? Another great performer. Mm -hmm. uh, Madison. Madison. Madison Stone? Oh, whatever. Is it, is it, Madison and Patricia Kennedy, the, the tag the, twins, tag team. The brunette? Madison? Yeah. Yeah. Tattoos a little bit. You Patricia know. Kennedy, too. Yeah. That's right. I think uh, Victoria Paris. Well, Victoria. She was a little bit earlier. Maybe. Yeah, the 80s, yeah. She was another friend with Chrissy Cannons. Yeah. yeah, Victoria Paris is cool. Yeah. So, not, so nobody really, the only one that stands out really was Gina Fine in the 90s for you? I got to know her personally, uh -huh. uh, you know, because she, she lived in Woodstock. We had a couple of uh, same friends, okay. and it was like kind of a coincidence that we uh -huh. met, and it was like we kind of all hit it off, and there were some okay. folks on the West Coast that I was friends with too. Uh -huh. So it all it was sort of kind of a family in a way. I got you. So we're all kind of close, and in a, in a, we look out for each other a little bit. But so it, who else was it's, hot? It's real to you? obvious. Hot, you know what I mean? In those nineties, out hot. of those girls, you know, Jenna James was pretty hot. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, it took a Savannah. lot. Savannah. Savannah was awesome. There we go. 
the star bangers stuff, right? I mean, they, listen, there were a lot. What do you mean? What do you mean? Star, not Savannah, Sav the original Savannah. The, the original Savannah, yes. Right. And she did the first star bangers. Really? Okay. Yes. Joey was in this too. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, I'll cast all these guys. All, all the, the guys. Mark Wallace was in it. You know, you know uh -huh. the, everybody. I'm surprised you weren't in it. You might have been. I probably was. <laughs> Maybe you were. You, you know, Joey, Joey says this will be the first and last gay movie I ever do. <laughs> Star Bangers was gay? No, no, oh, I wasn't there. <laughs> no, it was just a lot of guys oh, okay. and one girl. Oh, yeah, it was assholes and elbows. Oh, yeah, I wasn't you know? there. John, no. John, Bone, John T. Bone. No, I did a lot of gang bangs for, for everybody. Right, sure. For sure. Yeah. No. You, I mean, you were probably there, just another asshole and elbow. <laughs> it's fine. I don't remember. I mean, when I guys. used to do the gang bangs. Yeah. I, when the girl was nice, yeah, I hogged her. I hogged her. Yeah, yeah. Hey, anybody who could would, right? Yeah. I'm sure Ron Jeremy was there. Probably. <laughs> Annabelle Chong. I, I wasn't in that biggest one. Yeah. Oh, right. None of the pros were in that one. Yeah, that right. was all amateur. Those stuff. big, those big ones. I, I wasn't part of. But you don't want to be five to ten gang, man gangbangs. I did a lot of those in my early days. I did but then my rate was more than they didn't want me. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. You got to price yourself up. You know. At the, yeah. uh, otherwise, you're stuck there. Cal Jammer, you know. Cal Jammer. He started with that. He, he, he rose the occasion a little later. He cut his own way there. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll tell you, I don't want to tie these things together necessarily, but uh, she went on to produce her own line. Um, Jill, Jill Kelly. the most one of the most beautiful girls I ever saw in my life. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She was hot. An outstanding performer. She, yeah, she was very horny. Yeah. I thought she was the shit, for yeah. real. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, she was. Yeah, she was always very sweet too. But she's very. Yeah. She had a little dark side. You know, you could feel. Well, it made her interesting, right? Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel a little bit of darkness on her. Yes, indeed. Even though, and I'm not saying anything bad about Jill Kelly. No, I love her. No, she's no. always Makes to me, <laughs> always to me, so nice. Yeah. And I <laughs> fucked her once or twice. You know what I mean? At a party or okay. around the corner, or whatever. Right? And she yeah. was. Horny, great, you know, it was beautiful. Absolutely, curiosity for me. Anyway, see, I, I thought she was wonderful. A little touch of darkness, a little touch. Yeah, I could see it. Yeah. And yeah. Like, Gina Fine had a little touch of darkness. Exactly. Maybe a little more, right? <laughs> yeah, probably a little more. I don't, but maybe, I don't know for sure. But both <laughs> nice people, you know what I mean? I, I enjoy them. So I like you, people's dark sides sometimes. They're interesting that yeah, way. Yeah, right. It gives you something. I have. I don't believe right. in everyone has to be an angel, you know? Wow. <laughs> Not with where I grew up, man. Right, right. <laughs> Look at my family. <laughs> what? What's wrong with your family? Nothing. Nothing. But they're not angels. So no. Them, no. Okay. They're great people. They're they're not, they're they're not pure. They have their flaws. I embrace that. Oh. You know. <laughs> but you know, I was looking at your face just a yeah. moment ago. Yeah. And I fucking was saying, what the fuck? I look like I'm talking to your father. I get that. It's yeah. a trip, right? Sometimes I see it in the mirror now, like, holy shit, I look like... <laughs> I mean, you're thinner. You're thinner. But yes. I could definitely see some of the features. Very, very uh, trippy, man. It's I, cool. I like That's kind of fun. It is cool. I really liked your father. Him, him passing, it hurt me a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, hurt a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he was good. He uh, meant a lot to a lot of people. I mean, he was, you know... Yeah. For a guy like your father to say that I was the Michael Jordan... Because your father's a high-level guy, from in my opinion. Yeah. To say that is a hell of a compliment, you know what I mean? It's Gloria Leonard would say he was a charming motherfucker. Yeah? Yeah, it's a CMF. <laughs> yeah, they had a little fling, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh. That, that, Gloria Leonard. That was pretty well-known. So you could see that I wasn't fucking around. That, that then you could really see who's a good performer by the editing. And I remember doing the credits for the first time, the first time I ever saw you, you know, like, PT, who's this guy? I says, oh, you don't know that guy? I said, no, I never saw him before. I said, hold on. T T boy, what? Like T capital T T boy? You sure? <laughs> yeah, that's what we call him. Yeah, all right. I'll put it in the credits. I had to be careful with that shit because you you yeah. fuck up the credits, you got to do them again, mm -hmm. which means like re-record the whole crawl and a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I want to get, get this right the first time, so I'd insist that these guys give me the copy correctly and not have to like call me after the fact and go, oh, "This is fucked up or misspelled." And, I said, pull what you wrote. <laughs> you know, and half the time I'd have to pull teeth to get that list because these guys weren't ready to pay for the job yet. And I knew that when it was, the, oh, give it to you Monday. They didn't, they weren't ready to pay me because <laughs> I was ready to finish, you know. Uh -huh, so right. You want some goddamn money. Figure them out that way, you know. Though. Uh -huh. Okay, I just got to, he needs another week. All right, let's hang on to this. But that was, I would learn this. 
So you saw me in Part there. Part of learning you, my craft. Yeah, so you saw <laughs> me in there and you said, that guy's strong. Yeah, who's this guy? I never knew. I never saw you before. Uh-huh. You know, it's all these other cats, you know, Randy I, West, I, Randy I, West, I, Randy Spears. You know. Right, Randy Spears. Right. He's an okay performer. Good actor, huh? Yeah. I did some great stuff with my dad. Yeah. It was good. Well, he's a good addition to the show, but, you know, he had gr- good physique, strong, mm-hmm. good looking guy. And I had, uh, he was kind of had a mysteriousness about him as an actor. He was kind of cool. Yeah. He had w- some angst about him, which was interesting. Some what? He carried a little guilt. Yeah. About what oh, he was right. doing. Right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah. He kept it and he, he showed it on a video about three he, years he'd ago. He'd use it. Huh? He'd, he'd use, use it. it yeah. As an actor, he'd use it. Yeah. yeah, it felt, you know, fucked up about some of this stuff, like particularly stuff my father had him do. To play a priest. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fucking, you know, like this was, you know, Ron, I'm a Christian. You know, I said, yeah, yeah I know. Use, well, he's, it. He's use st- it. He would. Uh-huh. I mean, he was like the golden child of <laughs> Vivid. About you doing know? some darkness, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. He was the golden child for, for, for quite a while, yeah. yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the EPT got along pretty famously, if you know well, what I mean. No, what does that mean? They party together quite a bit. Really? Get in trouble together, sure. Really? I don't know, I know, tell me. Oh, come on. No, no, really. <laughs> you got it. I know PT party, but I don't know anything about any of that. Oh, do you remember? This? I know Randy Spears party, but tell me. Yeah. Well, you know, these guys would both not show up for work the next day. Together? Yeah. Well, they were on the same movie together. PT directing the actor, and then you can't find him the next day. Oh, call, no. Call it in sick. Oh, you too? <laughs> oh, guess that day's fucked. <laughs> Are you serious? Do they nah, both go they, out and get high together? Well, they've been up all night, you know. Cocaine, of course. girls together, whatever they really? were up to. That's yeah. great. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, for some of us. But yeah, yeah we get another day's pay and a kill fee and that, you know, we so, make a little extra. Sure, really? well, so they would kill us. <laughs> they finish the, the gig eventually, but, you know, for the guy writing the big check, you know, it's not great for him. I'm talking like he Steve first. Yeah, that wasn't doing him any favors. He get pissed off? Of course. I had him in here the other day. Did he? Oh, really? Great. Mm-hmm. Man, he's another great guy. What, what man. A, one of the best ever. What, what a sweet what a, what a sweet guy. Genuine article, man. Unbelievable. I couldn't... They don't make him like that anymore. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't believe... Of course, we talked numerous times, but not in a conversation like this. Steve Hirsch, incredible, unbelievable, nice, sweet Here's another guy give it to you straight. Never mm-hmm. pulled a punch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, honest guy, unbelievable, yeah, priceless. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's a trip. So Randy Spears and PT would finish the set, and then go party, and then it's easy not to show because you're up all night. Yeah, you're like, oh no, right? this, this happened more than once. Right, you know. Well, I mean, I heard, you know, Randy Spears flaked out quite a bit of times. I yes. hired him one time. Oh, he could do him this out of jail. You know, it's because he broke all the emergency glass in the carriage in, you know, because he was tripping his mind out and, yeah. you know, thinks the hotel's on fire, running up and really? down the hallways, smashing glass and taking the hoses, and it's all in his no, head, man. really? He's right off the deep end sometimes. He, he wow. has some issues, you know. Really? The stories that this guy... Down the hallway, smashing Everybody grabbing? knows this, so I'm not throwing him under the bus. This is, you know, sorry, Randy, I'm bringing this up, but it's a hell of a story. This guy stayed on my couch, too. You know, I love Randy. You know, he's a great guy. I had a good time with him. <laughs> I love him. But he got into some deep shit for a while there. He knows. Tell, knows. tell me. I'm surprised you don't know. No, I don't <laughs> Everybody know. else does. <laughs> what was, the, tell me a good... No, I'm, I'm telling you, if that's, a, for instance, that was kind of the, the pinnacle. And it was like, okay, so we can't do this anymore. So this he, is beyond he's, real, you know, yeah. acceptable. So what was he doing? Going down the hallways? Say it one more time. Please. I thought the hotel was on fire and that his kids were there and he went to rescue them and he was trying to get out the window with the fire hose. You know, he's pulling fire alarms and everyone in the hotel is, what the fuck is going on? There's a madman running up and down the halls. They called the cops. With a hose? I guess, or whatever. I don't know all the details, but it's something like this. And that it was pretty, you know, the hotel room is a mess. It's got a porno cassettes all over the fucking place. He's jerking off. He's losing his mind. You know, is cocaine there? I think crystal meth was crystal a meth, drug huh? of that night. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. But that's a substitute for the other thing, you know, for the cocaine. This, oh, really? Okay. Right. You know, the cocaine kind of went out of a, uh, vogue, and crystal really? meth took over. Oh. In the later 90s. 
maybe 2000, you know. The huh. 91, the 80s are gone. There's the 90s now, and now is bathtub speed or whatever, you know, really? crystal meth. Uh, you know, that was the thing. Wasn't my, you know, thing. You know, I mean, obviously I was... Me neither, brother. Yeah. Uh, I can't do that shit. I was, you know, I worked for these guys who were into this stuff, and, uh-huh. you know, sometimes they, I inherited a lot of work because they didn't show up. I ended up directing, covering PT's ass. Really? How many times? More than I should have. And I had to set him straight, too. I had to have that son-to-dad talk with him. Really? I can't do this anymore. This ain't good for business. (laughs) I appreciate this, but it ain't right. You told Paul Thomas, get his shit together. Yes. (laughs) And he respected me for that, and he loves me for it. And and he told me so. And, I, you know, he means a lot to me. I had to be straight with him, you know? (laughs) and couldn't let this go on. I mean... I wasn't prepared to finish the movie. I didn't do, I didn't do my homework. He knew the notes, not me. I could execute to the, off the you know, top of my head, uh, the skin of my ass. I could save the movie, but it didn't make it a good movie. You know, I'd get it done. But, you know, he knew where he was going with the movie, not me, uh-huh. you know. That's- it wasn't good for business. It wasn't good for the rest of the crew. And they, they were putting me up to it in a certain way. They said, you know, they, uh-huh. they said, that's, that's, that's one good, good. You get a bump because you're directing, not just shooting. You get more money. He's paying uh-huh. you. Yeah, well, he's got plenty of money. He's not doing this for the money. He can throw his money wherever he wants to. The point of fact is, if these movies tank, we're out of business. This isn't going to fly in the long run. We got to come back, baby. Get it together. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you're very appreciative of that. Really? I, mean, I wasn't afraid that he was going to like get rid of me. We didn't have that kind of relationship. We were uh, very, very honest, open kind uh-huh. of thing. And I was like, look, this has gotten too far. You know, I, I, uh, once, twice, even three times, okay? This is like five, six, seven times, you know. So, uh, this is not right. People who are paying you are expecting you to finish, you know, wow. not me. You, know, you got the credentials, not me, you know. I mean... I was a fan of PTs for sure. Oh, so was I. Right? Yeah, I just and like this work. Yeah. And he put me to work right away. It was great. You know, for him to, to put me to work, it was a, a fucking dream. But no buts. But, you know, the fact that he's a admits to his drugs and wildness yes. on the interview. Yes. It's incredible. I enjoy that. He's very right. candid about that. It yeah. is the same stuff he told me, too. Just, just to hear it all over again right, yeah. was kind of cool. It's cool. He's it's like, you know, being right next to him again, I, you know? I, we're... I don't think those days can ever be reproduced. No, and they shouldn't. <laughs> they were fun. I mean, I wasn't part of those crazy so drug you days. You don't want to go back and revisit history all the time. <laughs> so uh, you learn from it and move on. Maybe, you know, it's, there's, maybe, there's more to come. So, I hope. <laughs> Something else. So back to the girls. So we forgot the one girl we remembered. Yeah. Who was, for me... Prob for sure one of the best, or maybe the best, of the '90s, Raquel Darian. Raquel Darian, yes, Un- yes, fucking believably beautiful. Yes, I remember shooting some stuff with her as uh, shooting her as well as editing her, and she was one of the cutest things that ever oh. walked the planet, and uh, and delivered the goods. You know, yeah, she was hot. Well. She, they want to work with me. Her boyfriend was jealous or, or a little, hateful yes. or whatever. A I don't little know. exclusive. Yes, that's true. No, do you work with other guys? Want to work with me? There was a very small list yeah. that that she was allowed to work with. Yeah, harmless guys or I mean, I don't know. What was the weirdest thing? I don't huh? know the relationship. Yeah, you know, it's like I don't know. Yeah. The Buck Adams work with her. I can't remember exactly, but I know that Probably. sometimes a three way or. Yeah, you know, relationships are tough to maintain in this business. Uh, did you like the, the boyfriend? He was okay. Yeah, he, right. he was a little heavy-handed, a little controlling. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't blame him. You know, it's his relationship, not mine. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I, if I had that girl like that, I'd be awfully possessive too. Yeah, you know? she was incredible. Yeah, and, and I know how guys are. Yeah. <laughs> You know, how are you going to oh, handle yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, oh, yeah. you know yeah. handle it, you're going to treat her as well as I am? Maybe not, you know. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. If I would have got a chance to hit that, yeah, 
you know, probably, you know, I mean, because yeah. sometimes you get. Would you try to sight- sweep her off her feet, like take her home for good, uh, or what? No, no sometimes you get psyched. Sometimes you get psyched <laughs> out, but yes, the, good the point. beauty, you know what I mean? See, but I'm glad you said that. For some reason, I don't think I would have got psyched out over her. I never, you know, I always did a great job, but sometimes it wasn't as great as I could because I was, whoa, the girl's so fucking pretty, right? Right. But I felt like a magnet to her Yeah. that I didn't feel from very many girls. Okay. So I can guarantee you if I would have got a hold of that. Yeah. Well, maybe she saw something too, you know. I would have. If you feel that, right? I mean, I felt something. She, she, I don't know if she felt she anything. Caught an eye, but you think she, she, she wants to also. But I guarantee you. You feel it, you know. I guarantee you that I would have. Gave her all my best love, and I could have, you know, she was I'm incredible. Sure yes, and I've seen that. It's funny you say the psych out thing because I've seen guys come, oh, I can't wait to fuck this girl. I've always wanted, like Janine Lendemur. Mm-hmm. Okay. She's or, the 90s, kind of. Yeah, Jenna Jameson. Yeah. Yeah, early 90s. And guys come up, and it's like, oh, they're, they're so ready to go. I can't get it done. They get psyched out. Yeah. It's a big part of it. Right. You know, yeah. it's like fucking Mick Jagger, except it's not Mick Jagger. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> well, no. I don't remember that man. Yeah, that's gonna be scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, I mean, it's not what they thought it was gonna be. And I think in their fantasies, these guys are gonna drive the train and be the knight in shining armor and really you know, be the stud and all this kind of stuff. But then she has her part in it too. She has certain things that she wants to do. And don't touch me like this. Here's my good side. And then it comes a whole other control issue. And they're not really ready for that. And then she'll, they're going to cater to her because she's the star. The movie's about her. She gets what she wants. It ain't really about me. And suddenly this big shining armor superhero guy is now this little man. Uh-huh. You know, whatever she wants. <laughs> you know, got to play that role. You know, if you want to, you know, sit at the table, you know, play the cards right, you know, whatever. So Janine psyched out some guys, you're saying? A little bit, yeah. yeah. And then Janine was also, also like, nah, I'm not doing guys right now. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, prefer right. girls. And again, that relationships. But she was very, when I met her twice, I think, and I worked yeah. with her, we did a jack off where I was Rocco jacking was off. was one of the few. Did he? I, I worked with her just jack it off because she wasn't working with the guys yet. Right. But she was very sweet. Yeah. Very Janine sweet was cool people. I like yeah. Janine. Yeah. Very I know. Nice. Good. She was a little feisty, the whole tough was she? to get along with sometimes, but I, oh, didn't, yeah, I didn't yeah. care. You know, I still uh-huh. liked her. Yeah. So, <laughs> so did you see, what guys did you see that thought they were the shit? And when certain situations, high pressure situations came, they folded. God, I hate throwing anybody under the bus. Well, they're probably not around anymore if that's the case. Uh, let me think of a guy. Because um, some guys thought they were uh, real cool, you know? I'm trying to remember some of these guys. So, um, I'll give you an... Uh, it doesn't quite fit the profile, but maybe a James Bond. Remember him? Never heard of him. All right, there's a reason. Okay. <laughs> um Again, want to be in love with all these girls. One of those guys, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, I thought that he could charm his way into her, their life, and that there was some real thing. He needed some romance or something like that. It wasn't going to happen, you know. These girls respond more to a guy who like doesn't give a shit. You know, uh-huh. it's uh-huh. easier for them. Oh yeah, right. you know what I mean. Usually, yeah. Yeah, I tried to teach him that. But, uh, <laughs> uh, don't well, go. It's hard to do, man. Yeah, when you yeah, like a girl. Yeah, I know. Yeah, of course, it doesn't make sense, but. Uh, uh, I think of uh, maybe one of the Australian fellows. I can't. Jerry remember Pike? Name. No, he was a very nice guy. Not Jerry Pike. Um, there was also a South African guy who was another like one of these, you know, God's gift to some. How about a John Decker? Uh, uh, I mean, but John Decker could never get his yeah, he shit was going a until he injection until guy, right? that one day came. Yeah. Until that day came. Yes, right. We sh- shot up. But in that day, you know, but... It's, it was just, you know, you're bringing up situations, of, you know, and I, I don't know all these guys that well. They talk a big game, and then when it comes time to show up, you know, there's nothing there. Yeah. You know, I don't want to say, you know, say this guy. Uh, Maybe he had a bad day, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, a lot of these guys in this... God, I wish I could come a lot of, bad with names. Jason, a lot of these guys in this genre, this year's, 
they're not completely. They're half actors. They're half actors. I mean, I how that. many of them are half actors? Oh, I've a, heard stories that Mark Davis said oh. in his interview. Yeah. He believes that they're all half actors. Okay. You know what I mean? That's but I'm sure there's got to be a couple, you know, that aren't. We it's funny. We had this conversation last night. Or I was just eavesdropping, I should say. I'm going to say uh, Drew and uh, Seth Gamble and uh, another guy, a fairly new fellow. Uh, his name is uh, Jason. Uh, is, is an Israeli guy. Um, his name is Jason Morad, something like that. Marud? Moody? Something, something to that effect. Good performer also. But they're talking about, uh, you know, the injections, the Viagra, and this kind of thing. It's like... They're talking about us saying they do it. And the European League. No, not so much, but they compare themselves to these guys in Europe who, you know, like, how do these guys in Europe perform like this? Man, they're such studs. They're fucking, you know, up and over, da da da. And it's like, well, they're all ejecting. You know, they're all taking, uh, you know, they're, they're straight up injecting the Caverjack or they're down the Viagra or whatever the case is because they have complete confidence the dick's going to stay hard four hours no matter what. And they can do whatever the fuck they want, you know, and it makes them... Yeah, but that's not a good performer. Right. But no, Mark but I'm just, saying they were just having this conversation. Oh, okay. Right. And they, they were saying, yeah, but what is that? You know, it's, it's like the machines, you know? Yeah, fake. Yeah. So it's that kind of trick. But Mark Davis is saying that the Americans... Oh, Mark Davis. Here Mark you Davis yeah. said, you know, in the interview that the Americans yeah. performers... Yeah. He believes that pretty much all of them are half actors. But not those aren't his words, but he's saying that they take additives. And yeah. Franco Roccaforte from Europe, who's part of the European yeah. hard working, you know, well, it's genre true. says I mean, a lot of the guys that are working today are from Europe. So they might be Americans today. But they came from Europe. They're living here. I'm just saying what has been okay. said to me. So, All right, yeah, yeah. Uh, so But it's true. Yeah, you know, there's plenty of enhancement out there, right? right? right. And there was this whole thing, of course, you know, that Oh, the whole, the whole business is going to go condom. Remember those days? Right. The HIV scares and all this kind of stuff that, you know, well, it's just going to make us do all this. We're going to go condom. We did, sort of, a little bit. Uh, we shot extra stuff for France, condoms. It's the only part of the show we did for that. We, just, we just shoot two more, three more reels, 20 minutes more of all condom stuff. This is for Vivid, for, for French television or something. So at what point are they going to make us wear condoms all the time? Well, that's okay because we have Viagra and Caverjack. We can keep it up no matter what, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. but it's not really happening today anyway. I don't it doesn't believe matter, it, right? right? Yeah. You know? Well, I don't, nobody wants to see that on a. Nobody wants to nobody see it. Nobody wants to see it because right. it doesn't feel good. And, you know, Actually, it's just the, girls the facts are the sore. facts. Yeah. yeah the facts mean, are the facts. Right. You can't, you can't say, oh, no, oh, this, oh, that. The facts are the facts. People don't want to see it. Right. It doesn't feel good for either party. Right. And that's the facts. Right. And the public drives the market. True. Not that. The, not the actors. They don't drive shit. No, you're right. You're right. The customer's always right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. They drive the market. That's it. So that's true. All the people out there that want to believe shit, OSHA or whoever. Oh, that's politics. Right. That's a whole other. All, I hate know, politics. Right. They don't know. Anything. It's all bullshit. Yeah. So, so back, so back to the um, hottest girls of night. The hottest girls. So then, <laughs> yeah, Jenna, Raquel Darian, PJ Sparks, Jill Kelly, Jill Kelly. Yes, PJ um, Sparks. Well, she's more. Savannah was right? beautiful. So yes. she's really cute. Savannah, I think she was done about 1990 though. 91. No, she was done in 94. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And so. Right. And so then you have um, Janine Lindemeyer. Yeah. And, Linda uh, Mueller, I think. Linda Mueller, excuse me. I, and I'm, then, I'm, tough. I'm bad with names, so I'm probably not getting it right. Yeah, a few other girls uh, out there. Who, you know. She, she had a great friend. I also Gina liked, Fine, you're saying, was... was yeah, well, Gina language. and I had a different rapport anyway, but, yeah. you know, of course i got to mention her. Um, and, and Blondage, Janine's partner in that. Um, right. Julia Ann. Uh -huh. You like her? I like her. Yeah. yeah, she's a lot of chutzpah with that gal. And she's, she's still working. Is she? Yeah, she gets around. Was still. she pretty? She's still pretty. Was she pretty back then? Yes. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. Both of these girls. I like them. What about the black girls in those days? Yeah, Heather Hunter, Janet Jackme, 
Midori. Heather Hunter I worked with a little bit. I took her to Hawaii on that show you were with, uh, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, right? She was there. Yeah. I felt bad. She, she hurt herself and falling in the creek. City Heather girl. Did? Yeah. Oh, shit. Really? She, she didn't last. We got, she wasn't there long, thank God. You know, this is rough country for a city girl. <laughs> but she was cool people. Dug her. Yeah, super Dug, sweet. D- yeah. Good. And she has some good goods. The goods were good. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> Kylie Ireland has some goods that were super good. Yeah, okay. Jenna has some goods that were super good. Well, I know. You like the beefy I like, it, there, I like right? the goods yeah, to be good. Yeah, yeah. But I like them fat, right? right. But how about uh, my brother could tell you about this when I could. Uh, Angel Kelly. I never I, I got Angel in the Kelly's business. Angel Kelly's cool people. I got in the business because of Angel Kelly. Because I saw her in a movie. I was like, oh, I got to get in. She was the finishing touch, the finishing push. Really? To push me over the edge to make sure I made it. Right? She was your incentive. Yeah, when I was watching on the video, I said, oh, really? I, I can't. Oh, great! I can't do it. I got to get in, <laughs> right? And I didn't get to work with her, but I mean, she just, you know. <laughs> but I worked for her before Nathan was married. Yeah, Angel Kelly. I know. Yeah, you know. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> just to rub it in a little. Yeah. <laughs> Nineteen ninety, I worked for her in a um, movie when she was, uh, I don't know, one of the movies, the detective movie or something. But I was in. She directed me in her movie. Oh, I, I probably shot with, it. Probably, yeah. I'll bet uh, Shishi LaRue was in it. Uh, maybe. Uh, 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 the Pink Angel, what do they call it? The Pink Girls, the Pink Angels. They had t- shirts made like know. 50s but clubhouse I, I, stuff. I saw the, ironically, the other day on Twitter, Yeah. she showed her matter. on the co- cover of the Avian magazine in that movie with a machine gun and like yes. a nice suit. So that was that movie. I'm pretty. I'm 99% sure I was in that movie. I think I edited that one. I don't think I shot that one. Mm-hmm. I shot the next one. Uh-huh. It was part two or something. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, uh-huh. something like that. I'm pretty sure I was in that one. I think I worked with Felice Traub, I think, but I don't know. It's a long. Yeah. Remember Felice Traub? She was very pretty blonde. She had a fat one. She reminded me of Felicity. I remember that name, but she don't stand out to me. Yeah, she. One who else stood out to she, me? I think she's probably a girl, girl only one. Yeah. She, and then maybe like the, the brown hair girl. No. Yeah, yeah, Mexican. Right, right. right yeah, she was great. Right, she's cute. But yeah, she did yeah. later on. She did guys, but yeah, she I had think a fat right. boyfriend. Could be. Yeah, I don't know. But you know who else was super cute in those days, in the early nineties, to ninety two. I think she left. Jamie Summers. Jamie Summers. Yes, she was. I never. Sh- I don't think I ever shot Jamie Summers again. It was editing. Super cute. Vivi Gal, right? Yep. Yes, yes. Part of the Brat series. Yep. Nikki Randall. I liked her too. Yeah, I didn't work with Nikki Randall. She was, I she was that like name. the last of the Brats, yeah. right? Uh, and maybe Chasey Lane. Oh, of course, Chasey Lane. She came in there too. I gave her to Jay. I said, Jay, take her. Oh, yeah? Yeah, really? because, yeah. Okay. Because I was, she was, we messed around a little bit. She liked me, and I said, Okay. She liked me. I think she liked me a lot, I think. You know what I mean? Well, she was but outstanding I, before she got into the contract. I gave her to Jay. I said, Jay, you know, it's Jenna Jay. Yeah. I said, Jay, go Same ahead. one. Yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. But, um, but Chasey is beautiful, and she was it's cool and sweet. Yeah. You know? I think business made her crazy. That's drugs, too. Yeah. And, you know. So, all right, so you have those girls. I, I like them. I liked her, though. Well, she was cool. Uh, 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 Chasey was very cool. Yeah. And Taylor. Taylor, Taylor Rain? Taylor Hayes. Taylor, Taylor Rain Hayes. I like too. Taylor Rain was a good yeah. fuck. Yeah. I like Taylor, Taylor Hayes was... She's a little wild. Oh, yeah, from Ad- Seymour Butts Girl first? Yeah. Oh, she was great too, yeah. Yes, I liked her a lot. Yeah. That was very pretty. Mm-hmm. Uh, she had a pretty face, yeah. Yeah. You know what I like a lot is India Summer. Who? India Summer. I don't know. Little, That's the 2000s? Because now we want to go to the 2000s. We're going a little bit later. So let's, yeah. go, let's go on. So... And the two, th- yeah, but anyways, those black girls were. Did you work with Midori or Janet Jackman? Janet Jackman, I worked with, I think, at least once. She was great. Amazing. She was very good. Uh, who else did I work with? Um, Dominique Simone, you might have worked with her. Dominique Simone, yes. I also worked with, with Mika Johnson. Mika, unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, for me, she was. I know. Sexy I know. as fuck. And she was, man. She was. I saw what you guys saw, believe me. Oh, yeah. She, she was the ass. Shit. Everything. She had a fat one. She was Everything. cute. She's Look, cute. she was so cute and sweet. But guess what? She also had another side to her. I saw that a little bit. I heard bit. a little bit about that. I didn't see much of it, but I, could, <laughs> I saw it. I said, oh. Yeah. But she was great. She was beautiful. And she liked yeah. to come home. That's hang good. out. Yeah. She good. was amazing. That's nice. 
It is nice. No, she was really, the look, her look, she was great. Yeah, yeah. she was a hot number. And I want to say, Jada Fire. That's Jada Fire was hot. Yeah, yep. I did her first scene. Okay, really? Yeah. Oh, In Blackstreet Hookers. Okay. Number 11. Okay, see, so, yeah, so you were fine here all movie, these girls, you know, know I mean? what I mean? Yeah. I get it. Yeah. And then she didn't come back because I fucked her so hard. <laughs> In that scene, and she was so wild. We can handle this. <laughs> I going ah, crazy, and I think she came back three or four years later. Okay. And then she became a star. Okay. But she was cool, yeah. I'm trying to remember some other gals. Uh, uh, Africa, I shot. Um, India, there was an India a girl named. India. Yes, I liked her too. She was pretty. She, uh, very slim, yeah. but hard really, body, yeah. Mm, hard body, yeah. And gold. She had a, a nice look to her. She yeah. had real dark skin, right? But I really liked that, almost blue. Like her really? no, I thought she was she wasn't that dark. Highlights. Really? I like him. No. She, well, hell. I look at through the camera yeah. a lot too. You know, she sort of but, feels yeah. different. But yeah, she was cute. There was. Yeah. Um, she went around long she, though. I only shot maybe her twice. You know. Oh yeah, right. India. She's she's been gone. Yeah. 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 How was Angel Kelly? Do you saw her at home because your brother was going out with her? Yeah, we used to hang out. We go to Denny's and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, smoke a lot of dope and yeah. shit. Yeah. A lot of dope or just weed. Weed. Uh, coke? Weed. No coke? Uh, oh, maybe once on a blue moon, but not so much. Not uh-huh. with her. No. Okay. But she, she was, was friends with Portia. Uh, Portia Lynn was great. Yeah. And I, uh, Portia's another one I really, I really dig Portia. She's, she was cool. She's a very cool personality. A beautiful woman, too. Yeah, I, yeah. I think. Uh, tall, Again, statuesque. Friends with Bianca redhead. and all this stuff. Right. Yeah. A lot of chutzpah. I got to work with Portia. I was a fan of hers. Yeah. And I got to work with her three t- three or four times. She was, she was great. Mm-hmm. But, um, so Angel Kelly was very pretty, you know, because I didn't... Yes. In person, she was very pretty. Beautiful body. Yeah. Beautiful body. Yeah. Beautiful body. Yeah. Face super pretty or just cute? I say pretty. Pretty, okay. Super pretty, yes. Could be super... I, okay. I, I think she had a beautiful just face, sexy actually. Yeah. It's, it's something very just kind about her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Uh, you know... It's funny, you have a relationship with someone, you know, it's just, oh, my gosh, you're so beautiful. You know what I mean? It's just it's like, oh, there's that kind person. Again. You know what I mean? You're just hanging out with her. You know what I mean? Right, it's right, right. just family you know, at that point. You know? <laughs> Let's like, go back. Well, I don't want to fuck my sister, you know? <laughs> they weren't married, were they? Almost. Oh. I mean, they were inseparable for a minute. Really? Okay. Yeah, they were very close. Okay. How, yeah. how long did that relationship go on? A couple years. Your brother and Four Angel years, Kelly? Four years, something like that. Four years, oh, that's Close a good amount that. of time. Yeah, no, I thought maybe they would get hitched. What, what happened? Why did they stop? Well, I think, um, you know, Angel wanted to do things her way. Nathan oh, really? Nathan was not so appreciative of that way. Like, uh, okay. you know, you know, as guys, we have, uh, you know, uh, some certain hypocrisies. It's yeah. like, oh, it's okay to watch this stuff, but it's not to be sure. in it. Oh, it's so a man's, man's man has been yeah. hypocritical forever. Yeah. But know, on the he, other hand. He told me you were going to stop doing this kind of thing, you know, and. She says, well, I got to make my money, you know. Oh, really? <laughs> they get yeah. used to a certain lifestyle. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, I got you. You know, you know the adage, it's easy to take a girl out of the business. More difficult to take the business out of the girl. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or you can take the girl out of the hood, yeah. but you can't take the hood out, out of the girl. girl. Yeah, same thing. Right. 